the if I remember correctly. Yeah, that was it. That was all good way to go now. Yeah. Come here. All good then? All good. Looking forward to the weekend. Looking yeah. forward to giving away two and a half grand later on. You big lucky duck. Well, it's not my money, but hopefully... Uh, no. Well, That's a just... listener is going to win it because we draw a ticket, we call the number either off air or on air it doesn't matter no one has yeah. to answer the phone Yeah. hopefully we get to speak to them but we draw a ticket they win the two and a half Isn't grand that yeah. wouldn't that be just brilliant on a lovely lift, Friday lovely get... lift oh god there's lots of tickets things tickets are still available yeah and what time you do do you know can you no, say I oh. haven't been told no. yet after 12 <laughs> <I'm only laughs> it's not a secret it's just I'm on a need to know basis oh, Caroline. Caroline see look Caroline it's, doesn't think I need to know yes. yeah yeah okay, that's well. good I have a good show with them Lee see you Monday oh, all there's, yeah. there's Apple still they, they see they want their money's worth do you know they're going to be yeah they're doing a thing in Vegas too they're going to do that kind of hologram stuff Avatar thing, is it? Or something, mm. what is something yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Guys, no, right. We'll talk about that next week. Lee, have a goodie, all right? You Take too, care of yourself. It's nine o'clock. Time for a news update. And it's over now to Donald Kavanagh. Thank you, Greg. Good morning. The new Irish Medical Organisation president says that pressure non-consultant hospital doctors are under is unsustainable and must be urgently addressed. An IMO survey found 77% of non-consultant hospital doctors report being pressurised by their employers to work extra shifts, leading to some working what they believe to be unsafe hours. The new IMO president, Donegal GP Dr Dennis McCauley, says an agreement to limit the working hours of junior doctors is already in place, but government has yet to implement it. Remember, junior doctors are those doctors that are not only there to admit you, but these are the doctors who are doing the operations most of the day doing the, op, the, op, the operations at, at night and they're still working illegal hours. There is an agreement with the government in relation to uh, rationalising their hours to make it much safer for them and their patients but that hasn't been implemented yet. Celtis Chief Operating Officer says there are significant challenges in recruiting a consultant endocrinologist for Letterkenny University Hospital. The consultant post has been vacant since August of last year with consultant services currently being provided 12 hours a week on an outpatient basis. Celta and hospital management say they remain fully committed to the further development and enhancement of diabetes services in Letterkenny. Councillor Jerry McMonagall, who raised the issue at a regional health forum meeting, says the difficulties in recruiting consultants must be addressed. The pressures that staff are under at Letterkenny University Hospital. It's not portraying a good image in relation to working conditions at the hospital. Consultants always seem to be under pressure, as do nurses and NCDs and all that there. So we need to fill all the vacant posts that there is. I think management need to have a long-term view. I know they're trying their best. They have that. But for some reason, we're still not attracting the necessary number of consultants that we need to provide a proper health service here in Donegal. An increasing number of farmers across the country are facing financial crisis due to what they describe as a catastrophic winter. Public Expenditure Minister Pascal Donoghue says he doesn't plan to give more money to the Department of Agriculture but will engage with officials there to see what can be done within their existing resources. The IFA President Frankie Gorman has been outlining what farmers need to happen now including the fast tracking of payments. All current payments that are due to farmers that are due to farmers fast fast tracked we look for easy and accessible credit to be available for merchants and the banks. But we're getting into a situation, uh, particularly with the weather um, that's coming at the weekend, where more may be needed. And if that's the case, the government are going to have to come up with a package to support farmers to get them out of this difficult period. And a look at the weather now. Cloudy and blustery today with scattered showers and fresh to strong southerly winds. Some dry, perhaps isolated sunny spells will develop this afternoon as the showers die out in highs of 11 to 14 degrees Celsius. Overcast as clouds clear early this evening. Fresh southerly winds will strengthen with rain coming later. Heavy at times. It'll stay mild. Overnight lows 10 to 12. Tomorrow morning, very windy. Storm Kathleen tracks north across the Atlantic coast. Very strong and gusty southerly winds. Severe gusts in exposed areas from early morning. Scattered showers spreading before they'll ease later as Kathleen moves off north. Tomorrow's highs, 11 to 13. And that's Highland Radio News. We're back with more at 10 o'clock. An epic new Disney Plus original, Renegade Nell. Who is this? Nellie Jackson? A highway woman. <gasps> she fights as though she's possessed. She's formidable. <laughs> Meet the highway woman, who's a bit of a legend. A word of warning. You don't want to mess with me. <laughs> Renegade Now. Now streaming exclusively on Disney Plus. 18 plus subscription required. Decency supply. 
And now, it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the 9 to Noon Show, with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello, good morning to you. It's five minutes past nine on this Friday, the 5th of April, 2024, and you're very welcome along to a very busy uh, 9 till noon show. Our Friday panel has assembled. I'll introduce them to you in a moment. Uh, Seamus Gone will be joining us uh, after 10. Uh, with uh, answering all of your legal questions and that's entertainment comes up between 11 and 12 as well. We want you involved in the conversation throughout the course of the show, of course, and the lines are open for you right now. Uh, 086 60 25,000, your WhatsApps and texts to that number. You can send WhatsApp voice notes uh, to that number as well on WhatsApp. You can give us a call on 07491 or email comments at highlandradio.com. And if you want to watch the show and uh, pretty much all of our guests today on your big screen, your smart TV, uh, open up your smart TV, open the YouTube app, Highland Radio Ireland, the same on your Fire Stick. And we're across Facebook as well, Highland Hub, Highland News and Sport and on the X platform. Good morning to you all. Right, OK. Let us say good morning to our guests now. Uh, Dr. Peter O'Rourke. Uh, retired consultant, orthopaedic surgeon. Peter, great to have you back on the show. Good morning to you. Morning, Greg. Uh, also, we have with us uh, Emma Gova, the wee Donegal mammy. Good morning to you, Emma. Thanks for your time today. Morning, Greg. And uh, we have also Deputy Thomas Pringle, an independent deputy. Hi, Thomas. Morning, Greg. How's it going? Uh, good, good. Uh, now, we, we have a, a number of things to, to discuss, but I think when you talk about things like this, and it doesn't matter whether it's a local radio station or national or what have you, it's very hard to uh, ignore, nor would we want to ignore what's happening in, in the Middle East. And Israel has announced that it would allow temporary aid deliveries into famine threatened northern Gaza hours after the United States warned of a sharp shift in its policy over the Gaza war. In a tense, as we're told, 30-minute phone call yesterday, President Joe Biden told President Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that uh, US policy on Israel was dependent on the protection of civilians and aid workers in Gaza, the first hint of possible conditions to Washington's military support. Now, the development seems to have been triggered following the deaths of uh, six aid workers and not necessarily perhaps the at least 33,000 Palestinians uh, that have been killed Arguably, it says an awful lot about uh, humanity uh, as well as anything else. Uh, Deputy Thomas Pringle, I suppose, would you say this is a, a welcome intervention from from the US, or, or or too little, too late, or it just opens it opens up a whole ton of questions really about how we operate in this planet? Yeah, it does really, Greg, and that's that's what the the most, the most of this is. Uh, but I, I think it, it is positive that the Americans are finally getting the finger out. And actually putting pressure on the Israelis, and I think that's down to the the world opinion and the pressure that people are putting on, and also the it has more to do with the American election and the U.S. election than it has to do with anything to do with the Palestinians, unfortunately. And um, Biden seems to be coming under pressure from his own Democratic supporters in relation to what's happening in uh, Palestine, and that's where this is coming from. Um, I'm saying that it is welcome, but it's, it's by the sense of things, it only is going to be a temporary respite. So basically, the Palestinians, uh, the Israelis are going to allow the Palestinians to have some deep before they continue killing them. And that seems to be what the, the, the message is that's coming out from this. But I think what we need to do as a world is maybe put, try and put pressure on the Americans because they seem to be more open to it than on the Israelis. And um, if we can cut off the supply of weapons to Israel, they won't be able to continue on with the slaughter. Uh, Emma, what's your views? Um, I welcome it, but um, for me, it's. I, I think it's. I don't want to say it's too little, too late because any progress is is good progress. But I think it's a shocking indictment of society that seven aid workers had to be killed um, after the thousands of Palestinians that have been killed and are still being killed and are being starved to death, and they have been moved from one part of Gaza to the other. I mean, these these people were, 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 were told they were being moved to safety. A lot of them moved to Rafa because they were told that that's where they were they were to go. And then he talked about making a, a ground invasion of Rafa. I mean, this is just herding Palestinians into one area to make them easier to pick off as far as I can see. And, you know, from October, nobody is, is stating that what happened by Hamas in October was anything other than disgraceful and diabolical. But this collective punishment for the people of Palestine is wrong and it's genocide and it's a war crime. And it should be called out for that and we should be doing an awful lot more to to support the people of Palestine to get a long-term ceasefire and, and to implement the two states. Do we not kind of also have to challenge ourselves really 
and face the reality that there is a different value put on life dependent on the colour of your skin? It's complexion protection. That's what it is. At, at, at the end of the day, 33,000 Palestinians have died. But and, and I'm not absolutely not taken away from the seven aid workers that were killed. But the outrage, and, and it's simply because... I'm sorry, but it is. When we when we see that across the world, um, and I'm not in any way taken away from what's happened to the people of Ukraine at all. I, mean, I have great support for the people of Ukraine, but it took us a lot longer to acknowledge what was going on in Syria as well. I mean, we had reporters on the TV saying um, at the start of the Ukraine war, you know, their children look like us um, and, and they go to school, you know, they, they go to school like us as, as if, to, you know, so, so, so did Palestinian children, so did Syrian children and, and so did Sudanese children. At the end of the day, we need to take a long, hard look at ourselves and and, and realise that this is a, a human issue. And, and, and you know, there, there's one race, in my opinion, it's the human race. And I, and I feel like we have let the people of Palestine uh, I know there have been lots of people raising the issue out there. I, I know Deputy Pringle has done it repeatedly. Um, I know other people from people who are profited have done it as well. Um, and social Democrats and things like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a shocking indictment that 33,000 people in Palestine have died. And it only has really, America has only really started putting pressure on Israel now after seven aid workers have died. And and, and it is, I'm sorry, it might be a, a, a non-PC way to put it, but it is complexion protection, 110%. Okay, your former health colleagues, uh, Peter O'Rourke, um, they are hosting a, a vigil this evening, as they do every, or this afternoon, as they do every Friday, it seems now, between 1 and 2 p.m. at the main entrance of Letterkenny University Hospital. They say everyone is welcome there. Um, but Peter, you, just your reflections on, on 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 what we've been discussing so far. Well, I don't think anything I've heard in the news recently will make any difference. Um, effectively, it's a bit like Neville Chamber waving his piece of paper in 1936 saying, peace in our time. Nothing's going to change. Um, People in Ireland realise that this is not a, a, any criticism you have. It's not a criticism of Judaism. It's Z Israel, which is a Zionist state, which was founded in 1948 by terrorist activities. The Stern Group petrol bombed, they car bombed and shot British troops, and they uh, uh, basically uh, cleared out um, um, Arab settlements. And um, so. The fact that they're suffering the consequence of terrorism is appalling and what happened in October was appalling. But I don't think the Israeli state will rest until they have removed every Palestinian from the state of Israel, from Gaza and the West Bank. And unfortunately, the world cannot criticise them because of the Holocaust and the propaganda that goes around. If you criticise Israel, uh, you're anti-Semitic and what about the Holocaust? Is that not changing so, a little bit now? Um, because I, I just do kind of note a change whereby you are actually getting uh, news presenters to sort of ask these challenging questions and often the 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 response is really quite angry and how, how could you even imagine such a thing? But the presenters persist with their questions. I just wonder, is this sort of that protection that you talk of uh, fading now, whereby, you know, Israel is facing uh, tougher scrutiny, the same scrutiny it should have uh, faced months and months ago. But I just wonder, is the, the tide turning a little bit in that regard, that they might actually start seeing that the, the international reputation is heading towards, if not already, uh, uh, destroyed? Um, but I don't think it's changing rapidly enough. I mean, it's it's like Irish Americans thinking that everything in Britain was done to destroy Ireland, uh, and these are people who left the country you know hundreds of years ago, uh, or in or certainly generations ago. In America, the Jewish community is a very strong lobby for Israel, and they're. Jewish uh, and their support for Israel is unflinching. And that's part of the problem Joe Biden has because uh, there's such a, a strong Jewish lobby in America. There's a strong Irish lobby in America and we've benefited from it in part, but it also ties his hands when he's trying to do things. And it plays a big role in America. And unfortunately, I think um, it has given the state of Israel carte blanche to do what it wants to. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, thank you very much for that. That's uh, Peter O'Rourke. We're also in the company of uh, Deputy Thomas Pringle and Emma Gover. Back with more from uh, all three after these. Do
There's more furniture than ever on display in the extended showroom at McGinley's Furniture Letter Kenny. More sofas and suites, more bedroom and dining room furniture, and much more occasional furniture. If you're adding to your home or making some changes, call into McGinley's Furniture, Port Link, Business Park, Port Road, Letter Kenny, or visit McGinley'sFurniture.com. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie. Thinking of changing your floors? Why not see what Florid Letter Kenny has to offer? Florid have a large selection of solid, semi-solid and laminate click vinyl wood flooring together with a fantastic choice of parquet, herringbone flooring, all at incredible value. Don't delay. Call Florid today on 087-161-7008. Join Homeland Nether Kenny's Garden Super Saturday this Saturday, 6th of April. Meet the expert Homeland Garden Centre team and enjoy exclusive offers in store, including Homeland Lawn, Feed and Weed. Buy two bags, get two and a half litre Homeland Lawn Hero free. Mobacter, Moss Remover, 20 kg, buy two for 65 euro. Fco, 18 inch lawnmower, now 449 euro, save 100. All this and more, see homeland.ie. Harkins have been providing customers with quality fireplaces, stoves and electric fires for over 30 years. And now you can experience the elegance of luxurious worktop from Harkins. Their experienced craftsmen can fabricate marble, quartz or granite worktops to your specification. So, if you're planning a new kitchen or bathroom or upgrading your existing one, Harkin Fireplaces can provide a quote for your quartz, marble or granite worktop. Visit their showroom in Ballybogan Lifford or call 914109 or visit them online at harkinfireplaces.com. At Century Cinemas, we have a selection of event cinema coming up this April with live shows of the Royal Ballet, Macmillan Celebrated and Swan Lake. Also, the Met Opera La Rondine by Puccini. To make the event even more luxurious, we will be showing it in our premier screens. To book your tickets, visit our website at centurycinemas.ie. Simon Harris has been meeting with independents to shore up support for his government after he becomes Taoiseach. He has secured uh, the support of a number of them. Uh, presumably, uh, we know some of it, but with promises to address issues of their concerns. Um, Peter O'Rourke, is this the strength of independence or is it simply a sellout, really, and uh, a case of the government buying votes and support? Well, I think <laughs> it is a case of buy buying support. I mean, we have a bridge up in Donegal, um, which uh, an independent politician managed to uh, procure for Donegal. So uh, um, I think everybody will give support provided they get what they want for their area which isn't necessarily good for politics um but um it's certainly what's going to happen um i don't think we're going to have an election before the new year the new year and the prob in all likelihood the next uh, government will probably have even more independence and if an independent can get something for his uh, vote in his local area i'm sure it'll encourage the populace to vote for them do you think that is the case? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of the electorate might be choosing to vote independent because they are tired of, you know, the same old, same old, as they might see it in government. They don't really think that uh, Sinn Féin offers the alternative that maybe they seek. But if your option are independents that row in behind government, is that really a vote for independence in, in the true sense of the word? I don't think it's a vote for independence, but... Uh... I mean, a weak government is is not a good government. I mean, it would be better whoever is in power actually has the power to pass legislation uh, rather than uh, have to sort of beg, steal and borrow to get enough votes to get legislation through. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing having an increased number of independents because it all just weakens the government and makes... Uh, coalitions more uh, difficult. I mean, if you look at countries, I think it's Belgium ha haven't had um, an actual government for um, a, a year or more because there's too many different parties involved in it. Uh, and when you have numerous dis uh, independents who are um, only supporting various aspects of government, it makes it more difficult. Did they bother contacting you anymore, Thomas? <laughs> Um, no, he hasn't, he hasn't contacted me. I mean, basically, the, the independents that he has contacted are the independents that have been supporting the government anyway since uh, since uh, the foundation of this government, and that's that's who it is there. Um, I would 
But if I could just Greg take some issues with with what Peter was saying about independence and stuff like that there as well, because of course that's what we're in reality for. that's that's not not the situation. And you know, and what you'll see now in the run up to the general election, you'll see Fianna Fáil run around saying about what an, a benefit to Johnny Gall it has been having Charlie McConnell over here, and he's certainly not an independent. And it's going to say that only because Charlie's here that we've got we've got X, Y, and Z. You know, so th this this is what happens in politics, and um, that's that's the reality of the situation. But how do you do? Um, how do you deliver anything though for your constituents as an independent? Really, because you're a sole voice, you won't vote with a government on, on issues for the benefit of your region. I think you're on the record saying that. So what do you actually bring to the party, uh, pardon the pun? Well, I, didn't, I wasn't on the record saying I won't vote for the government for issues on the benefit of I, the I, region. I, I, I'm sorry, I, just, I, 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 I thought you said that you, I, I thought that you said that your approach was that you uh, you decide on, on na that you're a national TD, uh, you know, obviously you're a local TD, but I seem to recall us having the conversation uh, and you saying that even if it meant you, you losing your seat, that you would do what's best for the country, not necessarily what's best for Killy Beggs. Well, what's best for the country is best for Kelly Beggs as well, and it's best for Donegal, and that's the reality, and that's what people need to get beyond. And you know, and people people make the decisions on voting uh, on uh, and at election time based on personalities rather than based on political parties. And I, for one, certainly don't feel that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have been good for the country. And having Fianna Fáil majority governments and stuff like that there, as what Peter says is desirable, is actually what led to the MICA crisis and that we've had and and we've lived through in this county for many years and that's what's led, led to the defective uh, building materials crisis right across the country, which is going to come to light in the next couple of years. And that has been by having majority governments, and that's been go governments that have been led by developers and by the building industry rather than being led by the interests of the people. And that's the difference that, that it makes, Greg. And whether it's an independent or whether it's a political party, if they're going, doing it for the wrong reasons, you will have bad government. All right, so just on that, you, you, you were up in uh, up at the meeting um, in, in Burt and you fully endorsed the people's documents on the issue of defective concrete. I mean, this is hypothetical, but you never know. What, what, but if Simon Harris came to you and said, look, I need your support, Thomas, uh, uh, in in uh, as Taoiseach over the next year, you know, and I will strive. I'll do my very best to to meet uh, the concerns contained within the people's document. Would you support the government in that context? Well, that's that's something that I'd have to think very seriously about, and think and wonder whether the government would be serious about that. Whether but if they were, if they were, would you say right? Well, us yeah, I would. I would seriously consider it. Yeah, and I would have to. I would have to ask him well, why hasn't it been done up to now? Mm -hmm. And um, and that's 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 something that you would have to you would have to see, and you'd have to see that the commitment would be there, and that could be something that that would would play out and see see how that develops. And that actually would be benefit the people of Donegal, but it would actually benefit the whole country nationally as well, because there's a huge amount of um, defective products, building products, going to come to light and and coming to light right across the country so that and the the great thing about the people's document is that it, it says that the, the the they have to learn from the crisis and they have to make sure that it doesn't happen again and that's very important and so if that if Simon Harris came to me and said yeah look in the next year we're going to sort this out well then that's that's something that I would have to think very seriously about oh, that's interesting okay I didn't anticipate that answer uh, Emma Gova uh, uh, well I just didn't but I'll just be honest Emma I mean is it a case of, you know, fair play if, if Mark McSharry gets, you know, further investment into Sligo well, University that, Hospital or another TD gets, you, you know, a better commitment into to Limerick as an independent. Is that really what they're they're doing? They're representing their people and fair play to them? Well, do you know what? I mean, Simon Harris has come out and said that this is... It's not transactional. It's it's in alignment with policy. But I mean, I mean, we're not stupid. Everybody knows it's oh, well, transactional. Well, in five or six months, there'll be a freedom of information request, and we'll find out precisely yeah. what was promised. I mean, what's well, no, it's transactional because you look at the likes of, of temporary TD Michael Lowry, who has been the most vocal about what he's been promised. Um, I mean, he's saying that he he brought up when in his talks he brought up University of Limerick Hospital and the overcrowding and the negative effect it's having on Nina Hospital, and um, where elective surgeries are having to be cancelled because patients. Um, that Limit can't cope with are being sent there. And uh, Minister Harris has told him that they are 
we're going to make this a priority. They're going to engage in it um, on short-term measures to alleviate the problems. He also talked about issues for farmers' supports um, and additional me measures that needed to be introduced. And although um, Pascal Donahue maybe has come out and said, no, we're not giving any additional supports, I mean, he's telling Michael Larry that they are looking at it. Um, and then he's also talking about uh, support for small businesses and, and, and a direct line of communication with Simon Harris for future issues that he himself can go to him directly and talk to him about. So, and, and Simon Harris has said that he is open to that. So basically, you know, a vote from Michael Lowry is in return for the issues of which Minister Harris, the then coming Taoiseach, has said he will he will deal with. So, you know, what you've got to ask yourself is, um, what are the people of Donegal going to be losing out on? You know, at the end of the day, we have our own crisis here as well. And as we spoke about that this week. I mean, our own hospital has been overcrowded 11 out of the 12 months last year. Um, we were the we were the second most overcrowded in January of this year. Um, we had 5,300 people at Military Hospital without a bed last year and 1,200 had left without treatment. Um, we have a massive shortages in, in respite care. And there are actually children come from Cork to Donegal for respite and children from Donegal being told they can't access respite and they're being sent to Dublin. So, I mean, would that not be good for the country as well if if we could if we could get a better investment in our disability services and healthcare services? Um, so, yeah, it is transactional and my concern, um, and I'm, I'm not telling anybody which way to vote, but my concern is it, it's going to be a reward for the loyal and those who who, who shore them up and, and those who don't are, are going to maybe even uh, lose resources and, and and then it's the people of the county that are going to suffer mm. uh, and, and that's what concerns me as a person who, who advocates for people with disabilities and complex medical needs um, I, 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 it worries me that it's uh, you scratch my back I scratch and I know it's been that way for a long time I'm not naive but um, I, I, I do worry that, that we are going to lose resources and, The thing and, that and concerns me well. Emma is, is that when needed, we can deal with things. You know, that's that's the the, the problem. Yeah, I, I mean, have. they didn't have this. They didn't have these these resources for farmers a week ago. Um, no, you know, it, 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 you, you know, you've been allocated your funding, and now Pascal Donahue may have come out and said that oh, we're not giving any extra money. But Simon Harris has told Michael, well, according to Michael Lowry, Simon Harris has said no, he is going to look at extra supports for farmers. But you know, if that support is available, why isn't it being given out? You, do you know what I mean? This should not be held like a carrot to the people who who are who are representing their mm -hmm. constituents. That you know, uh, you know, holding over people and saying, you know what, if I get my way, then you'll get this. That should not be the way it is. If the resources are available, they should be made available. I mean, University Hospital Limerick should have been dealt with long before. They are in crisis mode down there. And the fact now that they, all of a sudden they're coming in with these short-term measures and they've opened up um, 86 beds yesterday. And I mean, this is I mean, why weren't they doing that months ago when people were crammed in, in trolleys? Uh, and, and, you know, people literally, I mean, the report came out last week that said a man lay dead for an hour before he was discovered. And now all of a sudden they're finding these resources. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it's a disservice to the people of the country. It really is. To, 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 it, it cheapens politics. I'm sorry, but it does. Uh, Peter O'Rourke mentioned, Thomas, that he believes that there'll be an election next year. Um, what's your view on it? Uh, I suppose we don't know what the impact of um, people leaving, uh, being elevated or elevated or moving to sort of... You know, talking nonsense we don't know the impact in terms of numbers that the eu elections will have and what have you you know what i mean so so do you do you believe that i mean obviously simon harris is gonna want a year at it the 10 months he has at it but what what do you think how long do you think this government will go on for well i think that i think they plan to go on to um to march next year and uh, it depends if, if there's tds are elected to the, the european parliament those by elections by law now have to take place within six months and um, so that would that would put you into probably i think it's, it's from from the date of the european parliament's set that you become an effect an MEP and you would have deemed to have resigned from the, the doll. So that I think that's maybe sometime in July. So six months from that would, would bring you up to um, 
the end of January and something like that there. So, uh, look, there's going to be an election probably in uh, October, November. It definitely has to be by March next year, and that's where, when it's going to be. Um, it's, it's possible that there could be an election next, next week if, if Simon Harris didn't get elected as T-shirt, but I doubt that very much as well. And, you know, and just uh, if I could just uh, go back and just in, in relation to the conversation about the value of independence and that you'd have to ask what the value is of having a government minister in the constituency if Lady County General Hospital is um under under so much pressure and that there and we've had government ministers sitting at cabinet for the last 15, 20 years, and um, nothing has, has developed in relation to that. You know, so maybe there is no value in having any TDs at all in the, in the Now we're getting now yeah. we're getting no, down so that, to the nitty-gritty. That's one of those people who have to talk about, but it's, it's certainly it's certainly not, you know, why should it be the value of uh, an independent that very can be sorted out when you have a government but manager, sometimes to the cabinet and makes the decisions in relation to the spending of money um and that very can in general hospital is declining. But sometimes in asking what the value of independence it might sound like it's phrased as a, a negative question as if to say they're worthless but at the end of the day you know thomas in in terms of going out to your voters uh it, it is they that might question you know what is an independence and conversations like this actually maybe uh you know reinforce uh, what your belief system is versus what uh, you know, someone down the country uh, might be. So I don't think it's necessarily uh, negative. A caller says, did Peter say government needs to be strong to pass legislation? Well, maybe that's a good thing about having so many independents is that they will listen to the people who elected them and not pass legislation that is not what the people want or to uh, the people's disadvantage. Example, the hate speech uh, bill. Uh, right, OK, we'll be back with uh, more from our guests and your, more of your comments after these. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Do you suffer from high cholesterol, menopause symptoms, digestive issues, anxiety, aches and pains or a lack of energy? The highly trained team at the Natural Way Letter Kenny can provide advice on natural remedies for a number of individual health issues. The Natural Way also has its own brand of herbal treatments to help fight fatigue, relieve digestive discomfort, maintain a healthy immune system and alleviate common menopause symptoms. The Natural Way at Letter Kenny Shopping Centre, your one-stop health shop. Mixed messages on fodder supports. For more in your Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. Department and Minister at odds over how to help farmers as spring deteriorates. We have key advice for farmers on on on-off grazing, managing delayed turnout and what to do about silage fertiliser. Demand continues to exceed supply in lamb trade. Farmer fury over government support for BBD programme. We talk to the suckler farmer breeding €4 per kilo weanlings. Plus, we look at how the vacant home renovation grant is paid. All inside this week's Irish Farmer's Journal. Aurora's Hobbits, Crossroads, Killy Gordons seek employees to join their expanding crash. Both full-time and part-time roles from 15 to 40 hours per week depending on the role. Must hold a QQI level 5 or equivalent. Please apply by email to aurorashobbits at gmail.com. Chakdark Bubbly Ochorle Kondai Winanal. Be Glantahan Moor Winanal a Tarle Don Ork de Blenimliana Agas Caso Gomeshini Smo Nario. Tarama Agas Koji Lang Edge Lan Agas Glassienu de Winanal Le Konion Le Hebron Agas Le Kurcha Horcharhi if he hit the Keher. On Claru the Lantahan Moor Winanal Kerglia or Nod Shark the Keher, Ni Heen, Quick Tree, Ni Nod Nod. Willis Jack, Hoik Dafa Gudurish Etchel, Nutter Kurch or Donegal Coco Ponkai. Major La Claro Freshing, Dactis Glantahan Nation to Arian Tashke or Lina at www.punk national spring clean.org. The parts of the Hemert, a Gatanya Ogun, the Mishaguber La Hila, Hondunanal, a Honyal Alling. Are you struggling with ill fitting dentures? Are you tired of avoiding the steak menu and going straight to the softer options? Blue Poppy's special implant assisted dentures can help restore your full bite sensation. Call today for a free consultation with Drs. Ehor and Ahmed, Blue Poppy's new implant team, and explore our attractive payment plans. Find contact details for our Letterkenny and Donegal Town practices at bluepoppydental.com. Now, we are in the company this morning of Deputy Thomas Pringle, Dr. Peter O'Rourke and uh, Emma Gova. Um, could Thomas support Simon in a deal for Donegal? Should he not try, asks uh, a listener, so that you reach out and uh, say to him, Thomas, uh, you know, I might back you, but I need such and such. 
Well, there's no there's no point to me doing that there because Simon Harris isn't looking for my backing and yeah. isn't looking for the support of the people of Donegal for his for his candidature for Taoiseach and he will have the support of Charlie McConnell and Joe McHugh when it comes down to it and uh, that there so that, that's the, the case um, if it was the case that he was looking for support and needed support then you'd be in a position that maybe you could you could uh, push for something but that's not the situation at the moment. A report which suggests uh, an annual bill of €20 billion Euro for 20 years to fund a united Ireland has been described by some as a worst-case scenario. I think that's Sinn Féin's position. The report by the Institute of International and European Affairs said the significant expense would require an increase in taxation of around 25% and or a significant reduction in expenditure. I think the criticism of the report that it doesn't fully account for a potential uplift as well. But this does, I think, give us an insight into what will likely be the actual public debate uh, when it really gets into full swing. And with that in mind, Peter, do you think the people of Ireland, I don't know if you want to take it as a whole, north and south, uh, do you think the people of Ireland would vote in favour of unification when the the balance sheets are laid bare? I think from a financial point of view, unless people were certain that uh, it would not significantly damage the economy and damage their finances. Personally, I think there would be a certain amount of reluctance. I mean, Germany, German reunification cost a hell of a lot, and I think the German economy still hasn't completely recovered from it, and that's been, what, 25 years or so. So um, the economic side of things, I mean, when you think of the, the children's hospital as an example, which has doubled in or if not tripled in cost from uh, when it actually started never mind when it was considered and um, the estimates they're giving for what it would cost the economy are probably a, a drop in the ocean from the reality that would actually come to pass so from that side of things uh, i think there might be a significant amount of reluctance and i think that there'd be sort of probably different of opinion geographically i think i wonder further south you go would uh the Irish public be more sensitive to the potential impact, negative impact it might have on them, you know, whereas in, in, in Donegal, I suppose, we, we might see things differently. Um, I think that's probably true, but ultimately we now have um, a situation where everybody has expectations of being financially secure and getting access to everything they want, having their new iPhone every year or two, having Sky and every other streaming service, and uh, being able to uh, uh, go on holidays whenever they like and having a good quality of life, working from home. Where are these people? Hours a week. Who are these people? I don't well, know who, they, I don't know who well, they are. This, but uh, This is the expectation. Okay. And if somebody was going I've to I've just had to sell my car to clear off the credit union loan. I don't know who the hell you're talking about. <laughs> well, I said expectation rather than reality. Okay. <laughs> and if you take the right. expectation away, good luck. Okay. Uh, Emma, uh, what, what do you think? How, uh, you know, I mean, let's just, I mean, obviously there's going to be a, there's going to be a, 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 a there's going to be a conversation, you know, about a United Ireland for political reasons and, and cultural reasons and what have you. But of course, as I've just been saying to Peter, you know, the, the, the balance books are going to be out on the table as well here. What impact might it have on health service? Where would cancer services be delivered in, in the northwest where would you go for treatment you know and again uh, the financial Im uh, impacts uh, even if 20 billion is a worst case scenario i don't think anyone's disputing that it would cost the state uh, considerably emma do you think that the, the people the great people of this country this island would vote in favor for unification well i actually watched the debate last night between um lisa chambers potter mclaughlin and professor uh, fitzgerald and they did a poll albeit a, a short one on the tonight show and 63 percent said no that they would not uh, want to see their taxes raised for a united ireland 35 percent said yes and two percent said they weren't sure but i mean that's that's 63 percent said no but, you know people i am a proud irish person i would love to see united ireland in in my time um, but realistically speaking, um, given the, the cost of living crisis we've just come through, um, when we had to, when we had the economic crash, people they're still very fresh in people's minds, and um, people may vote with their wallets. I mean, I mean, there are other studies out there, like from the British University of Columbia, that actually says that there'd be a thirty-four billion benefit over eight years. Um, and then the uh, professor Seamus McGuinness has said that this is, is this is vastly pessimistic uh, view that it's actually more like three billion. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to bring um, social welfare. You're going to have to bring in the public sector pay in line 
with the Republic um, because you can't have a two-tiered system. Um, I think, personally, I think it needs... I would hate to see how you can go through our own version of Brexit by not planning properly. I think that it needs uh, real economic analysis and we need to look in depthly at the education system and the health system and it needs properly planned and prepared for. Um, and But if people think that it's going to cost them 20 billion a year for 20 years, work out of 55 million a day, um, when you break it down like that, uh, as much as, as they want to see it and, and I want to see it, um, they probably are going to vote with their wallets. That is the reality. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Thomas? Well, I haven't. I didn't see the program there, and I haven't had the chance to read the report uh, as yet in relation to it. But there is no doubt that um, the reunification would have a cost involved in it, and um, there's no doubt about that. And but it would also require the British government to support the reunified Ireland financially for a number of years to actually the transition period that would that would take place in relation to that. So the ongoing cost wouldn't be significantly as, as much probably as what they're what they're saying. But also as well as that we have to think about the, the positive that would come out of it does too. You know, the, the reality is that in the 26 county states that we have now at the moment, we're running short of workers, we're running short of, of people actually to sustain the, the economy as, as it is ongoing. And in a unified country, we're adding an extra 1.5 to 2 million people, um, and everybody will be working together towards the benefit of, of the whole country. And that would make sense. And, and economically would make a difference to actually how we can develop further on. And remember as well too that um, at the moment we run a surplus in this country and something like in the, in the next three years there'll be something like uh, uh, 40 or 50 billion that will be put aside by the, by the state. You know, So the state is in a, is in a very strong position and um, and also as well what we need to look at too is like we've had the when we continue to have the state um, looking after the wealthy and looking after the rich and and to the detriment of everybody else is what, what you, you said yourself there greg and um and you know so we need we're, what we're talking about as a new state and we're talking about as a, as a new country and um, it's not going to be Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael rubber stamping and taking over 32 counties instead of the 26 counties and making aims of that and you know so it's going to be a completely new dynamic and i think that's going to be very um positive and it's going to be something that's going to be very attractive and i think that we have to have a full debate and plan for this as as um, i was saying and that as part of that will be the economic arguments but um i would certainly be arguing very strongly that the economic arguments outweigh anything yeah. else and we and we should be getting together and come together as a 32 county state that would actually benefit everybody living here It'd be interesting to see, Peter, who, if any, would step out of the shadows or out of the ranks to campaign against a reunification in the Republic and, and what angle they might come at. I, I don't think anybody is against re mm. reunification. It's an ideal. It's just that how it is achieved and um, the time frame and, as uh, as we mentioned, all the, be it the healthcare systems, the uh, social welfare systems, the educational systems, it's going to take time. I mean, as I mentioned, Germany as, as an example, Germany still, although uh, there has been reunification, uh, the East and the West are still very different places. The economies of the two sides of Germany are different Voting and patterns the attitudes of the people and everything is still yeah. Yeah. different. Okay. And I suppose... Well, we have Germany still the biggest economy in Europe. Yep. Yeah. But also, too, um, really, like, I presume if, if there were a vote there would be a time frame and a transition, you know, be it 10, 5 or 10 years, I don't know how long it might be. And and that's really when all this is worked through, isn't it? Sort of, so to some extent, I can see the benefit of this report, but it kind of feels a bit moot in that we don't, until, we, we don't really even know what the British role might be. And there's no guarantee that they'll want to dig deep for this either. So I suppose, or what the EU's role, for instance, might be. So there's a lot of unanswered, but still I think uh, we're kind of easing uh in the direction of where the debate most likely will be. Uh, Greg, what's the point in a united Ireland when the Irish are going to be a minority in the future? I don't think the Irish are going to be a minority in the future. Uh, there might be different people here, but uh, I can't see how there could be a minority unless six or seven or eight or nine or ten million people were to, to move here. Comparing the unification of Germany and Ireland is not great examples, in my opinion. Example, monkeys and giraffes. I mean, we can't compare it like for like, but I mean, it would... It's obvious that there has to be some 
learnings from the reunification of Germany that we can we can look at here, I think. Uh, in fairness now, Greg, Harris is simply using the typical election book here, bringing independence on board, promising this, that and the other. Uh, he'll be no different than Varadkar. Wait until the real election and we will see. Uh, and on it goes. OK, we're going to take a break and we're going to be back with more from uh, Deputy Thomas Pringle, Dr. Peter O'Rourke and Emma uh, Gova after these. Stay where you are. Have you entered our €10,000 home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Greg Hughes will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the 5th of April, giving you the chance to win €2,500 in cash. That's not all. You will still have a chance of winning in our main draw of a €10,000 home makeover in association with Foy & Company, plus €5,000 in cash. Get your ticket now at HighlandRadio.com. Well, Grace, how are you today? I'm good. I've just been down to the Made to Measure Fireplaces showroom in Chrysla. They have an incredible selection of over 40 colours for kitchen worktops. And guess what? For a limited time, they're offering a 40% discount on any electric fire when you purchase a worktop there. 40%? That's an amazing deal, Grace. Absolutely. And trust me, if the discount alone doesn't sway you, their huge selection of fireplaces, stoves, wood pellet burners, beams and stone cladding certainly will. Contact Made to Measure Fireplaces. Places Kreeslaw on 074 313865 on Facebook, Instagram, and on mtmfireplaces.ie. At Shannon Airport, we know what makes a dream holiday. It's not just the huge choice of destinations like Chicago, Paris, Newcastle, Naples, Barcelona, and Porto. It's the hassle-free experience that makes getting through our airport a dream. So whatever dream holiday you're packing for, head for shannonairport.ie. Shannon Airport, making it easy. Hi, Paddy here at Shane Connolly Cars in Donegal Town. Are you looking to upgrade your car? With Shane Connolly Cars, you'll find mix and models for every budget. Great finance options and we also accept trade-ins. Check out shaneconnollycars.com or call in to us at Shane Connolly Cars from Lonnerhill Road, Donegal Town. The Big Easter Sale is now on at Cooney's Home Interiors with 20% off all departments, excluding existing offers. That's huge discounts on all suites, tables, beds and accessories. We have many X-Display models in beds and sofas all reduced to clear. Treat yourself to a bargain at the Easter Sale in Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Sale ends Sunday the 7th of April. Country Sundays at the Clanry Hotel, Letterkenny. This Sunday 7th is Patrick Feeney and his band. Dancing 9 till 11, admission 15 euro on the door. Coming Sunday 21st, it's Johnny Brady and his band. But this Sunday, don't miss Patrick Feeney at the Clanry Hotel, Letterkenny. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, the weather forecast now. Obviously, we know uh, it's going to become quite unpleasant uh, tomorrow. Not as bad up here, though, as it will be in the rest of the country. Today, though, a cloudy, rather blustery day with scattered showers and fresh to song, strong southerly winds. Some dry and perhaps isolated sunny spells will develop this afternoon as the showers die out highs of 11 to 14 degrees. Now, a report... Uh, no, I've done that one already. GPs host a conference next week here in County Donegal in Letterkenny opposing the Dying with Dignity bill. Should choosing when you die be a right or will it change how we care for people and maybe even the value we put on life? And I suppose given your healthcare background, uh, Dr. Peter O'Rourke, I'll start with you. We're talking about uh, assisted dying, assisted suicide, as I think those most likely to oppose it tend to call it. What's your view? I think it's overdue. Um, <laughs> there is a sort of a, 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 the thought that life should be prever- preserved at any cost. I think sometimes life can be hell on earth and for certain medical conditions when people are dying in pain or have no hope i think it has to be considered the difficulty is how do you um legislate for it and how do you monitor it and that's the difficulty and the excuse against it is always you'll have relatives killing off their old age relatives that are a burden or uh, rather than sort of it being used in a, a humane and considered way but i i think it will eventually come in as as it has come in a lot of countries throughout the world why why should it come in 
Well, from a personal point of view, if I had a, a terminal condition and I was in extreme pain, if I could put myself out of my misery and put my family out of my misery and their misery as well, I'd be quite happy to do it. Um, and just because someone else has a moral objection to it, be it religious or other means, it doesn't mean that they should force you to into a situation where you have to suffer uh, just for, for the, to solve their conscience. But say you were diagnosed with something, uh, let's say MS, uh, for an example, and it was uh, determined that you you know that, it, and, and MS comes in all different forms, of course, but that it was determined that this would eventually take your life, it would re reduce your mobility, your quality of life, and eventually would take your life. Like, uh, even at what stage... Is it immediately post-diagnosis? Is it once you no longer can move around yourself? At what point would we say, okay, it's all right at this, it's okay now to unburden your loved ones and, and, and uh, take your own life? Well, but that's the whole argument. You, you have two aspects. You have say, you can't do it, or you can do it, but when? And the conversation would be having, we should be having is you can do it and when, rather than, that you just can't do it under any circumstances. And that is the argument that needs to be had, I think. Um, but, I mean, I, I agree with you, it is difficult, but there are some people whose lives are so miserable um, and are in so much pain that they do not want to be alive. And I think that we have to respect that. But please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I seem to talk to you many, many years ago, and I'll retract it instantly if I'm, if I'm incorrect. But I, I, I seem to recall you questioning sending older people with with cancer long distance for treatment with you know, you know going through the ordeal of that you know with perhaps maybe extending the life short term am i correct in was that a view that you yeah. you you've, yeah, you've more, shared more more or less i mean um i i think there is a point where life should not be maintained because it can be and just because it can be there are times when people have lived their lives and they should be able to die um, peacefully and uh, without going through further suffering. So, yes, but I don't think it's a different argument to the one I'm already making. Yeah, of course I get that, but I'm I'm, I'm just wondering: does so, in some way are they kind of uh, kind of related? But anyway, I, I'll just uh, I'll move on to Emma now. Emma, what's your view on it? I mean, do you see any circumstances where we should have assisted dying legislated for in this country? Oh, that's a load of gun, isn't it? That question, um, but. You know, when 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 it first came out and and, and, and we realised there has been an Eroptus committee put together to discuss this, and I commend them on it because it's, it's a very difficult conversation. It's a very sensitive subject. Um, I personally myself was aghast. Um, I, but you know, I'm a, I'm I'm a mother of children with complex medical needs. My oldest daughter has a progressive disease, and I think more of I was seeing it as his doctor Orca said. You know, I didn't want her to feel compelled later on in life to have to feel like I need to do this to make life easier for everybody else and I was so hard line in that decision and I was very against it until I actually had a conversation with her about it and her point of view would be as a person with a progressive disease is that she herself would not want it she wouldn't ask for it but she wants to live as as long as, as she possibly can um um, we hope that she lives till she's 60 or 70, you know, but she had a long conversation with me and she said, because I want that does not mean that I have the right to tell somebody else with this condition who is living in extreme pain that they know is going to get worse. And um, there are some people in their 20s and 30s with it who are already having TPN feeding and are very immobile and um, they have stomas and things like that. And their quality of life is greatly reduced and, and you know, the thing is, I don't have the right to tell them just because I want to, that they should too. I think it's a very sensitive... So your, daughter's, the saying, your, your daughter's saying, just to be clear, and I know we're all choosing our language very carefully, your yeah. daughter's saying that it she can't see a scenario where she would opt for assisted dying, yeah. but she at the same time wouldn't be of the view then that because that's how she feels, all the people in similar situations might feel different. Yeah, that's exactly what she's saying. The only part that concerns me about it now, um, for me personally, I, I from a from a moral point of view, and and, and 
when you say that, it sounds like you're judging somebody, and, and I'm not. I'm just saying from my own personal point of view, I I struggle with the concept of it mm -hmm. greatly. But my concern is how we regulate it. Um, you know, I know they're saying that it's going to be between six to twelve months to live, um, and two two independent doctors will have to sign off on it. But my concern is later on down the line, if amendments are made... I mean, well, that's, don't get that, that's what we've seen in other countries that... Yeah, initially... where, where it came in, it was very regulated. And and, then, and now, I mean, there there, there was a, a story of a girl. I mean, I remember reading the article, as, uh, you know, in an actual newspaper online who uh, who had suffered with depression chronically for 12 years and two two doctors signed off in a European country for for her assisted dying and and whilst I don't deny that woman was an extreme emotional pain, um, my concern is the regulation around it. Yeah, you know, but the I suppose what, the uh, yeah, but I suppose a, lot, a big conversation we often have is that you know we need to see you know poor mental health the same way we we see physical health. So I suppose that's and the argument. And I would like was... to think that if this does come in. Um, this is the other part that concerns me is that if this comes in, it's kind of then an opt out to invest in services to help people who don't want to avail of this. You know, I wouldn't like to see that. Yeah. I wouldn't like to see resources stripped back because there is this other option. Um, I mean, there are the GPs feel that this will change necessarily. This will change, you know, uh, care of the elderly, end of life care, palliative care, hospice care. That you know, once this is introduced, that changes an awful lot of stuff. But uh, Deputy Pringle, I think there was a couple of votes in the doll on this. Was it Gino Kelly's bill? Is that his second name? Uh, did did you vote on this yet? Uh, was it yes, no, or what's your? But do you know brought forward a bill to uh, allow for assisted dying and uh, it was a private member's bill and from, I think from memory it was it was uh, passed but delayed, the implementation date was delayed to allow for the, the committee report to happen and basically basically what, what the situation is now is that the committee has reported and, um, and made recommendations. Now then what happens is the government has to draft legislation and um, then that legislation then will come before it all and be debated and, 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 and passed then as well. So I don't know whether it'll come uh, before the, the end of this government. I'm not sure about that. Um, and also, you know, and it, 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 is a, it is a very difficult situation and it's a situation that Emma's really outlined it very significantly for somebody that could potentially be directly affected by it and um and you know and i would i would the one thing i would say is that the as far as i understand it the let the illnesses that would be allowed this would be allowed for and the prognosis would be very tightly tightly controlled and you know and we have to make sure that that, that is the case and, and and it's a very personal decision as well for the people that are involved in it obviously and um, we've had high profile cases of um but, but people who who wanted to. So, are you minded to vote in favour of it? Uh, if 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 the checks and balances that you talk of were there, you know what I mean. I know it's a bit hypothetical here, but but basically, do you find yourself leaning towards the fact that you probably could back something if it was set up the right way? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that it is something that um, if, if set up properly and with the proper checks and balances, then there could be it could be something that would would help a certain amount of people but we have to we have to make sure that it's, it helps the people that, that want to help mm. but the people that don't want that also getting getting help there as well you know and that's that's vitally important yeah but the problem and is is though when we, what we do know is that when something is legislated for that very quickly that legislation can change uh you, you know like we're not get we literally don't have the time but maybe sort of the abortion system we have in this country at the moment is very different to uh, what was put to the people to vote on, some would feel as well. And I think maybe that might carry over into this. But unfortunately, we don't have time to tease that tease that out um, unless someone thinks I've said something wrong there. It needs clarification. Now we're happy enough. Well, well the, only, the only thing is that... that um, 
uh, legislation should be able to respond and should be able to change. And the only, only alternative is, as we say, right, no, you can't do it and leave things as they are. And that, that leaves people in a traumatic situation that uh, we'll have to deal with, they will have to deal with in the future without any support from society. And I think that's wrong. Right. Deputy Thomas Pringle, thank you very much for your time. It's about 60 40 in favour of you having no beard. I'm not sure if you care. Uh, but that's that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> like there at the top of my head. <laughs> All right, take care, Thomas. Thanks very much indeed. Deputy Thomas Pringle. Emma, lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for all of your time. Thanks, Have a lovely day. And last but certainly not least, a good friend of the show, uh, Dr. Peter O'Rourke. Thank you for your time, Peter. Take care of yourself. Okay, we'll be back with more on the Nine Till Noon show after we take a break uh, for the news and obituary notices. Seamus Gunn is going to be joining us after 10. Step out of the ordinary and into the new Lexus LBX because this is the luxury compact SUV reimagined in every detail where style, elegance and innovation define a new kind of driving experience. It's your world. Make it extraordinary. Experience the new LBX Hybrid at your Lexus retailer. Available with a range of flexible payment options. Lexus. Experience amazing. Your local dealer is Lexus Letterkenny. Sheridan Security, now introducing Zero Wire Smart Alarm Systems. Zero Wire, zero mess and a real peace of mind. With a simple press of a button, your alarm can be set or unset. Or download the free app and control it from your phone. Call us today on 074 912 6025 and get your alarm from 299 euro. Stay local, stay safe and protect what you value most with Sheridan Security Systems. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie. The life of a Charlie's chip is never dull. Once they're selected, they're off to Charlie's where they lose that jacket, have a nice wash and get into shape. Before going out, there's always a few nerves, totally unnecessary because, let's face it, they always go down well. Enjoy Charlie's Chips to sit in or take away daily from 12 to 8 at Pierce Road, Letterkenny. When the hunger hits, pull into Charlie's. Sleep under the stars at one of Ireland's top glamping destinations, Love Mardle Lodge in South Donegal, offering lakeside eco lodge with luxury yurts and shepherd's huts. Perfect for a family getaway or a romantic escape. Get 10% off with discount code Mardle for bookings made by end of April. To book, call 086 02 360 or visit lochmardleglamping.ie. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's 10 o'clock. Donald Kavanagh at the news desk. Independent Donegal TD Thomas Pringle says he would consider supporting Simon Harris as Taoiseach if he promised to fully embrace and implement the People's Document published last week by defective bloc campaigners. However, Deputy Pringle told today's Nine Till Noon show he would have a number of serious questions, not least why the government hadn't done so already. Deputy Pringle told Greg Hughes he believes successive governments contributed to the crisis because their policy was geared more toward developers than ensuring regulation. However, he said if there was a genuine and credible commitment, he would have to carefully consider it. That actually would be- benefit the people of Donegal, but it would actually benefit the whole country nationally as well because there's a huge amount of um, defective products, building products going to come to light and, and coming to light right across the country. So that was, And the, the great thing about the People's Document is that it, it says that the, 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 they have to learn from the crisis and they have to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And that's very important. And so if, that, if Diamond Harris came to me and said, yeah, look, in the next year, we're going to sort this out. Well, then that's, that's something that I would have to think very seriously about. The new Irish medical organisation president says non-consultant hospital doctors are under unsustainable pressure. An IMO survey found 77% of non-consultant hospital doctors report being pressurised by their employers to work extra shifts, leading to some claiming they're working unsafe hours. It's one of the issues under discussion at the IMO's AGM, which is into its second day in Killarney. Well, the organisation's new president, Donegal GP Dr Dennis McCauley, says an agreement to limit the working hours of junior doctors is already in place. 
but he says the government has yet to implement it. Remember, junior doctors are those doctors that are not only there to admit you, but these are the doctors who are doing the operations most of the day, doing the the operations at, at night. And they're still working illegal hours. There is an agreement with the government in relation to uh, rationalising their hours to make it much safer for them and their patients, but that hasn't been implemented yet. Celtus Chief Operating Officer says there are significant challenges in recruiting a consultant endocrinologist for Letterkenny University Hospital. The consultant post has been vacant since August of last year. At present, consultancy services are being provided on a 12 hours a week outpatient basis. Celta and hospital management say they remain fully committed to the further development and enhancement of diabetes services in Letterkenny. Councillor Jerry McMonagall, who raised the issue at a recent regional health board meeting, says the difficulties in recruiting consultants must be addressed. The pressures that staff are under at Letterkenny University Hospital, it's not portraying a good image in relation to working conditions at the hospital. Consultants always seem to be under pressure as do nurses and NCDs and all that there. So we need to fill all the vacant posts that there is. I think management need to have a long-term view. I know they're trying their best. They have that. But for some reason, we're still not attracting the necessary number of consultants that we need to provide a proper health service here in Donegal. There's been a very dramatic 90% rise in the level of investment fraud. Over €25 million was stolen from victims of investment fraud in 2023, almost equal to the figure from the previous two years combined. With more, here's Tara Duggan. Investment fraud is where criminals pose as finance managers and lure people into investing money into schemes or companies that don't exist. Garthi are warning that over 55 cases have already been reported in the first two months of this year, with cold calling and social media among the methods used. Men are most likely to fall victim, and in some cases the sums involved are large. One case reported in May of last year involved a man in his 60s who transferred €300,000 after being contacted online. Another involved a woman who had €50,000 stolen after responding to a social media ad about a cryptocurrency investment. Garthi are advising people to always get financial and legal advice and check via the central bank website to see if companies are regulated. And an increasing number of farmers across the country are facing financial crisis due to what they describe as a catastrophic winter. It comes as Donegal faces a yellow wind warning from 5am to 8pm tomorrow with the approach of Storm Kathleen. Public Expenditure Minister Pascal Donoghue says he doesn't plan to give more money to the Department of Agriculture but would engage with officials to see what can be done within their existing resources. The IFA's President Francie Gorman has been outlining what they need to happen now, including the fast tracking of payments. All the current payments that are due to farmers, that are due to farmers, fast fast tracked. We look for easy and accessible credit to be available for merchants and the banks. But we're getting into a situation, uh, particularly with the weather um, that's coming at the weekend, where more may be needed. And if that's the case, the government are going to have to come up with a package to support farmers to get them out of this difficult period. And there is bad weather on the way at the weekend. Cloudy and blustery today with scattered chars and fresh to strong southerly winds, some dry and isolated sunny spells possible too this afternoon as the showers die out. Highs of 11 to 14. Becoming rather overcast as clouds clear this evening. Fresh southerly winds will strengthen though as rain arrives later tonight. Heavy at times. It'll stay mild with overnight lows of 10 to 12. Very windy tomorrow morning with Storm Kathleen tracking north across the Atlantic coast. Very strong and gusty southerly winds. Severe gusts in exposed areas from early in the morning. Scattered showers spreading before easing later as Kathleen moves to the north. Tomorrow's highs, 11 to 13. That's Highland Radio News. Back with headlines again at 11 o'clock. Good morning. The obituary notices for this Friday morning, April the 5th. The death has occurred of Nora McBrearty, Nae McDermott, Maumeen St Johnston, formerly Strelinchy Glenties. Nora will repose at her late residence from 4 o'clock this afternoon and again tomorrow from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock with removal at 8 o'clock going to St Bathan's Church St Johnston arriving for half past 8 to repose overnight. Requiem Mass on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock with burial afterwards in St Columbus Church Graveyard Drumahull. Family flowers only please donations in lieu if desired to the Alzheimer's Society Donegal branch care of any family member or Kelly's funeral directors. 
The death has taken place of Michael McClafferty, London and formerly of Gorsham Moor Downings. His remains will arrive at the Church of St John the Baptist, Carry Gard, this evening at 6 o'clock to repose overnight. Funeral Mass on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, followed by interment in the adjoining cemetery. The death has occurred of Brendan Holmes, Bogey, Newton Cunningham. Brendan is reposing at his late residence with rosary at 8 o'clock tonight. Family time from 10 o'clock. Funeral cortege leaving his late residence tomorrow morning at 20 past 11. Going to All Saints Church at Newton Cunningham for 12 o'clock requiem mass with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Mass can be viewed on newtoncalaiparish.com. Family flowers only please donations in lieu if desired to the Society of St Vincent de Paul care of any family member or Kelly's funeral directors. The death has occurred of Alan Simmons, Crilly, Petticoat, County Donegal. Funeral in St Joseph's Church, Letcher Cran, Petticoat, this morning at 11 o'clock, with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family flowers only place donations if desired in aid of the Irish Motor Neuron Disease Association and Cardiac Unit at SWAH to Pat Britton, funeral director or any family member. And the death has occurred of Mary Ann Boner, Molly Rowe Duhuri. Funeral from her son Michael's home today for Requiem Mass at 12 noon in St Bridget's Church, Letcher Mac Award, with interment at the new cemetery. House private pleas before the funeral. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Pon Vrutinach an Togalach, agus Detak Shi Vetram Hushach. Beggar Timple Dinner Wine as Gach Kuiger Ion and Vrutinach Dolhwig Hospital. Is ein vaccine new on Hussant is far. Machail du Fein no the Foshta Macher in vaccine MMR, Toklar Kuitiv Serenashka, or Harshkant Egan HSC in Nish, the Foshti agus the Rina Fosse in Holaha. Hun oil a mach on a vaccine oil, agus Hun Quinna Ayenev, to our quarter HSC Punkai, slash measles. On HSE. And now, Imro's 2023 Best Local or Regional News Programme, The Voice of the Northwest, The Nine Till Noon Show, with Greg Hughes. Now, before we get into some of your comments, uh, just to remind you that if you haven't got your ticket yet for a home makeover draw, now is the time. Get your ticket on highlandradio.com. Uh, where it's safe and secure to buy your tickets there. Or, if you prefer, you can give us a call right now on 07491 The lines close uh, periodically, or for a period, at 1115 um, this morning, so in about an hour. Uh, we're going to give away, and it could be the first ticket bought or it could be the last ticket bought or any in between. We're going to give away €2,500 uh, at half past 11. €2,500. Uh, that's this week. Next week, we give away a €10,000 home makeover plus €5,000 in cash. Okay. Uh, it's in association with our friends at Foy & Company. Now, if you uh, want to buy your ticket now, is the time to get it because you're in for the two and a half grand. So if you were going to buy a ticket next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's fine. But if you want to be in with a chance to win two and a half thousand euro today, go on, go on to our website, highlandradio.com, get your ticket there. Uh, or give us a call if you prefer on 07491 But you've just an hour to go until we give away uh, two and a half thousand pounds. Right. Uh, the right to die is back to Hitler's time, believes this listener. First we killed the children, now we're killing the elderly and the disabled. It's ridiculous that people who are on strong medication for which every medical issue they have are being asked to make a decision like this. It's clear they'll not have the proper capacity to make such a decision. God gives life and only God, this caller says, uh, can take it away. Uh, Greg, there are two very different strands of Judaism in the US. Um, the dominant one, which controls the media in large parts, is the Zionist strand. The other one is the progressive uh, Jewish strand, which have demonstrated repeatedly and vocally against the Israeli genocide in Gaza, but gets very little of any press coverage. What the dominant American Zionists do not quite understand is that they can no longer use the Nazi Holocaust as a weapon to get everything they want politically, given that the Israelis themselves have committed their own Holocaust against the Palestinian children. Israel has made the worst, the very worst of uh, strategic blunders and has showed their true hand. 
A caller says the Tories and said Brexit would be great for the people of Britain, but it hasn't worked out that good for the citizens. No, it's brutal uh, over in Britain at the moment to have relations over there. Uh, it's tough. I read yesterday that the council have spent millions on refurbishment of council houses. I've been in mine for 10 years and not once has my house been painted. I've had to do it myself. Uh, maybe the money they've spent is... I didn't read the article, but is it about sort of maybe getting them back into use? I'm not really quite sure. Um, now, let me see. I want to mention that the Refo Pipe Band have a tractor run uh, tomorrow. It's leaving from Refo Livestock Mart, that's the Derry Road Refo, uh, at 1pm. Registration is at 11am. All types of tractors, cars and lorries are welcome. It's €20 Euro per vehicle. Uh, refreshments at the end of the tractor run. Now, there is a prize draw as well for all entrants and uh, the charity partner is the Donegal Hospice. So uh, that's tomorrow. Right, let us take a break. Uh, we're going to be joined on the programme very shortly by Seamus Gunn. He's going to be answering uh, your legal questions and having a chit-chat as well, so stay all right where you are. That's coming up after these. It's time for Vision Ireland Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Friday, April 5th, playing on the yellow sheet. Reference number is S10, it's game 14. Today's numbers are 69, 13, 67 88 27 18 47 36 45 and 84 Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8 tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book. Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at hydenradio.com. O'Neill Sportswear Warehouse Clear and Seal is back in Straban this week. We have major reductions on unmissable products. Find incredible deals on training gear, jerseys, shorts, and so much more. Don't miss out. O'Neill Sportswear Warehouse Clear and Seal in Straban. Sale finishes Saturday the 6th of April. O'Neill's. Live for it. Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny are the largest stockists of interior and exterior paint in the Northwest. If you're planning a painting project and need help picking the right colour and brand of paint for your home or commercial premises, call in and ask our qualified paint colour consultants, interior designers and interior stylists. The team at Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny will be delighted to help. For real choice? Leave diesel behind and make the move to Toyota Hybrid Electric at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. World leading hybrid electric technology, lower emissions driving, with the widest choice of hybrid electric models from Ireland's best selling car brand. With flexible payment options available, make the move today at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. <coughs> Toyota, built for a better world. It's that time of the month to say good morning to Seamus Gunn of McLaughlin Gunn and Company Remelton and Letterkenny. Seamus, good morning to you. Morning, Greg. How are things? Fantastic, and it's great to have you back on the Good, show. Yeah, nice to be here. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our lines are open, by the way, for uh, last-minute questions to 0749125000. But before uh, we get on to that, interested in your views on this uh, subject because we read that public liability and employer insurance premiums rose by eight percent in 2022. At the same time profit margins for insurance companies increased by over 50%. A new central bank study also found the cost of public and employer liability sentiments is down, uh, settlements is down 43 million on 2019 levels. Businesses in the accommodation and food sector saw the largest premium increases with some reporting rises of 24%. Uh, Brian Hanley from the Alliance for Insurance Reform says recent moves by the government to tackle uh, the increases have failed. So premiums on the up Profits on the up, up, up. What's going on, Seamus? Unpack that for us. Yeah, yeah. I think it needs to be Solomon, really, Greg, to do that. But um, it, it has been, it's another report, and uh, it's one that I think people uh, should and will sit up and take notice. Because I suppose, firstly, we have to consider uh, all the different strands of society that this impacts on. You know, you, you, have the, you have the business community, you know, the commercial enterprises that are out there. Then you have community groups and you have sporting groups. 
And they're, they're, this has a serious impact on those. They're, those types of organisations, especially the voluntary ones and the sporting ones, are finding it nearly nigh on impossible to get to get adequate cover. And, and some are, are actually tied into the one insurer. And that's for, uh, as a point that has been brought up, uh, is because of the lack of competition. Uh, they're, leaving, they're leaving that segment of the market, so there's very little actual competition in it. But when but the headline as you make it's stark, so it is. The premiums are going up, the claims are coming down. For so long we heard about that that the premiums were driven by the levels of claims. In the particular year of reference, the 2022, they're down by 33 percent, a full third. But yet, yet the premiums are up by eight by a full eight percent in in this particular sector. Now. What's all interesting is this is only came out. This report came from the Central Bank, I think, yesterday morning. There has been very few insurers actually come on uh, the media shows like yourself and try to justify this because when you did when you dig down into it for so long, they said, "Oh, it was the cost of claims, it was the cost of settlements, it was legal costs." They, they were, that drum has been beaten for years. So what they've done in, to try to deal with that is. They've now introduced um, new Judicial Council guidelines to make recommendations for personal injury awards so that people have some idea what level of damages they will get. We thought that that would be a sensible approach. That's, by the way, being challenged at the minute in the Supreme Court. So that may or may not stand, but we'll wait, we'll wait and see. But this is, this is a prediction, though, and this is also quite stark. I, I believe now that the level of claims uh, as a result of the new Judicial Guidelines Will be going and will be on in the increase because the awards that are being made by the injuries resolution board are at such a level that they're going to be challenged through the courts and that will have a knock-on effect of actually increasing claims rather than reducing them now only time will tell whether that comes to pass or not but if that does then then you could be in a situation where claims are actually up as a result of these activities and premiums even go up further. Mm. What's the knock-on effect of that? It's back to the small community groups, sporting groups, local businesses, find it nigh on impossible. So they're, they're, they're rearranging the, the, the deck chairs on the Titanic here. This is going, this really is going over. It's it's another report and by, by, by their uh, uh, intermeddling actually with the system, uh, the PIAB is now called the Injuries Resolution Board. I think the knock-on effect is that claims are actually going, go, going to actually escalate up. There has been two books of quantum, and this is interesting, since 2003. And that gives guidelines as to what award should be. Dissatisfied with that, the insurance groups lobbied to have a new set of guidelines introduced. In April 2021 or thereabouts, the Judicial Council uh, gave effect to that, and there's now a new Judicial Guidelines recommendations, which in, 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 per, in, in practical terms has reduced the level of claims compensation down to about a third of what they were at. But why Again, is that? Not, why is not that really, book, this, is, this isn't really yeah. being broadcast or being highlighted at all, but if that is the reality of it, uh, what, what's the knock-on effect of that is those claims will be challenged by people like myself because they're inadequate. Mm. What does that do? That puts up the cost further. And in a lot of cases, a lot of them cases that are challenged are successful, I have to say. So the awards will be higher. And the knock-on effect of that will be another increase in premium. So what's the function then of this book of quantum? The, the function of it was meant to be to reduce... Yeah, awards. but how how come so many how come so many awards are not using those guidelines then? It's so not obligatory. The, the, the injury, yeah. Well, the, dealing with that, they come in, and and it's it, it's a very interesting point because they come in in two thousand and twenty one. This report is in relation to the year two thousand and twenty two. There were those were cases that were in the pipeline pre those guidelines. They were under the old book of quantum. Mm. So they would have been actually higher. 76 or 77% of them were under the old old guidelines. So that would have attracted even, even higher damages. But what's happening now is the Injuries Resolution Board has to adopt the new guidelines, which, as I said, are coming in at somewhere near around a third of the damages. And the net the net effect and the knock-on effect of that is that they will they will be challenged. 
And we'll see when the Supreme Court knock it down or not. It, it probably, it may not do, but uh, the, the, the insurance industry as it stands and with the setup uh, currently, rather than the desired effect of reducing claims, where we're at now, I see claims going up and I see costs going up because the injury board, uh, the, the awards that are being made are not adequate and are being challenged by lawyers and rightly so. Yeah, and of course, that'll, all those litigation costs and what have you then... And that's all that, yes, into, and that yeah. builds in. And, and to be quite perfectly straight about it again, it, there's been studies, m multiple studies on it. They can, when a case comes to, comes to court, and I have to say, not that many of them do, and percentage-wise, you might be down to maybe 10, 12, 15%, at the very max uh, uh, at that sort of level. But if they go all the way to court, they could add 40% to the value of the case. By the time you cover costs. So what's the solution? Not only the cost, not only sorry, the costs of the claimant, mm. that's the plaintiff of the person challenging, yep. but the cost of the insurance company to defend it. So that's 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 what that's how again drives up premiums. So then is it is it a case then that we have to throw everything at the baby with the bathwater or more realistic uh, awards through the Book of Quantum, I think it's called, isn't it? It, it? Does that need to be revisited so that is referenced more and becomes uh, it becomes a middle ground between uh, you, you know the 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 person making a claim and, and the insurance companies? Yeah, well, that's fair to say. It's the guy. It's now actually the Book of Quantum, which I always thought was adequate enough. It was it, it was making reasonable awards. This was the second book. Yeah, that one is now being reformed, and the issue now is that. The new guidelines that are being put in place to replace that have reduced the level of Understood. recommendations yeah. down to about a third of it. And there is the nub of it, and that's mm. what's going to result in the challenges. That's that's my I prediction. So uh, it would be, I'd be very interested for uh, you to have some of your insurer representatives to try to come on and justify this. And again, I'm saying the knock-on effect for community, sporting groups, businesses, small businesses such as our own and all that is phenomenal. All right, challenge accepted. Leave it with us. Uh, hi, Greg. Could you ask Seamus? I'm looking for advice on my rights as a consumer. I bought a car in January in a private sale. It was advertised on a well-known car website. We probably can all work out what uh, that was. It's a seven-year-old car. At the time, I was told it had no mechanical issues. The car was running fine till a few weeks later. A lot of things started to go wrong and I took it to a dealer. After the car went through the diagnostics, it showed many issues, and as a result, to fix the car, it will cost more than I paid for it. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the original advert, only that the car is absolutely immaculate. Well, there's a, a website called the Way Way Back Machine, uh, which might help you in that regard. But anyway, do I have any rights or comeback because I'm paying for the car and I can't afford to fix it? So they took out a loan, Seamus. They've yes. bought it on one of the websites, a private sale between two individuals. They were told the car was fine. Their dealer now says that the car's uh, got a whole host of problems. Yes. Do they want to know, do they have any recourse? Well, um, look, at uh, you would you can understand how this happens. You know, there's, there's websites out there all the time and, um, you know, there's attractive looking bargains and consumers are drawn into them. Um, and um, these situations, have they got recourse? The, the only little salvo of hope that I have, and, and it is small, I have to say, unfortunately, is that you, you mentioned that, it's, you mentioned the words absolutely immaculate, or they say the, the reference that has been, that it was, the, the, that was represented to them. Um, and uh, under, under the law, you might be, uh, uh, be able to make the claim that that is misrepresentation of a product. Uh, and uh, and trying to induce one into a contract and it's false and therefore you would uh, mount a challenge on that uh, with regard to the, the cost of the car and the replacement and the damages that would follow um, but the caveat and it's a major caveat in these situations um, I have always recommended to people if it look at if, it, if it's too cheap to be right it's probably wrong but but if you want to go down that avenue Get a mechanic, motor engineer, someone you know, or someone who who, who is well versed in 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 the motor industry, to go along with you when you're viewing it and carry out a few mm, tests. Mm. These it might sound it, it might sound very straightforward and, and and common sense, but it's not that common. These diagnostic machines are quite portable, believe it or not. Too you can have one of them or someone with you that could use them um, and check it out and and do that check on it and then part with your money if you so wish. But 
It's caveat emptor in this type of situation. Buyer beware, because the individual, and you've said it there yourself, that they bought it from is, is a private person. It's an individual selling it. They can say, once you look at, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know anything about cars. I'm just selling my car. I'd want to get my best price for it. What's wrong with that? So if you stick to your dealer uh, and, and somebody who's in the trade and you buy from them, well, then you have recourse. So the person is in the situation where the car would cost more to fix than than it costs. They can't afford to fix it to make it ro- uh, road worthy and they can't afford to buy another car. It's a horrible, horrible situation Absolutely. they find themselves in because they've Dreadful. got a pile of scrap that's worth nothing. Dreadful. But the truth be told, they, they won't have any success pursuing this with a private seller, will they? Um, well, yeah. They, the only little salvo, as I just said at the start, is uh, but they're going to have to invest money in it and they have already said they've spent money and they're not going to, the car's not even going to be worth, you know, fix, get put back to where it was at. You'd have to arm yourself with um, a motor engineer's report mm. for starters. Uh, that's, and, and that's going to cost money. Uh, not sure they're entitled to be, uh, pay, be paid for that, whether the case goes ahead or not. And then then you would probably, I would think, it, it launch your attack anyway under the heading of the absolute immaculate point that was made and say, listen, this was misrepresentation and, and you're going to pursue it down that route. You're going to have to engage your own lawyer um, and, uh, you know, there's there's going to be funding involved of that. There'll also be the added hassle and stress of it going forward. So whether you're going to be successful, and this will be waved at you all the time when this was a private individual that was doing the deal, and uh, you should have mm-hmm. you should have gone and looked about it properly and, and, and had the car assessed mm-hmm. by an appropriate expert before you bought it. I mean, I've sold a couple of yeah. things in the past on, on these websites, and then you've got Facebook Marketplace, which is another entity altogether. And I've se- I have sold them. I have sold them in, uh, in, in in all honesty, in good condition as far as I was concerned. But that doesn't mean, as you said, I'm not a. That does not mean that in a week's time the head casket could go and the engine's gone. Yeah, and, yeah, and you, you know, and that. genuinely, I would have. And in your, sold and in your opinion, even yeah. just developing that, in your opinion, it was imma- absolutely immaculate. Yeah, you had no issue with it. Never gave you, a, never gave you any bother at all. And now suddenly it's given trouble. So. That applies right right across the right across the board, and um, it's it's unfortunate. Whether the person wants to invest money and, and, and go down that route that I suggested, or cut their losses, it's entirely up to them. Um, it's a, it's a very unfortunate one. More questions answered from Seamus after these. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook, and at HighlandRadio.com. Have you entered our ten thousand euro home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Greg Hughes will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the 5th of April, giving you the chance to win €2,500 in cash. That's not all. You will still have a chance of winning in our main draw of a €10,000 home makeover in association with Foy & Company, plus €5,000 in cash. Get your ticket now at HighlandRadio.com. Mixed messages on fodder supports. For more in your Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. Department and Minister at odds over how to help farmers as spring deteriorates. We have key advice for farmers on on on-off grazing, managing delayed turnout and what to do about silage fertiliser. Demand continues to exceed supply in lamb trade. Farmer fury over government support for BVD programme. We talk to the suckler farmer breeding four euros per kilo weanlings. Plus, we look at how the vacant home renovation grant is paid. All inside this week's Irish Farmer's Journal. The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale is now on. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Derry, Cookstown and Abbey Centre. Sale now on. Safe Tech are running appointed persons training in Donegal and Dublin in April. Also running crane lifting supervisor, quad bikes, electro fusion and butt fusion welding programs. All programs are part funded. Terms and conditions apply. And certification accepted on Irish and UK construction sites. If you have a group, Safe Tech trainers will go to you. Contact safetech.ie today for more information.
Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford Straban and Bondoran was honoured with the title of Best Family Entertainment Venue at the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards. Here are some of the reasons why. The Director's Lounge is brilliant. Homemade popcorn in a class of its own. The pizzas are amazing. The staff are friendly and helpful. I enjoyed having my hot food delivered to my seat. It's just a really class cinema. Treat yourself to a night out at Eclipse Cinemas in Lifford Straban and Bondurin. Mr. Blue Sky. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 75 million euro. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. OK, we are in the company of Seamus Gunn of McLaughlin Gunn and Co. Remelton and Letterkenny answering your uh, legal questions as best we can. Uh, Seamus, my aunt is leaving me her house in her will, but I'm worried I will be faced with a huge inheritance tax bill. The house is worth around €150,000. Any suggestions? Um, yeah, well, yes. Uh, with, with making it clear that I'm not a, a tax consultant and, and sometimes people, you know, can... Would like to you know consult with somebody such as an accountant or that who is dealing with matters of, of tax probably on a, on a daily basis however um they are they are under the umbrella of what's called capital acquisitions tax which is gift tax and inheritance tax which all come under the one and we do deal with that type of situation that arises um the, in, the what's of interest is that we're talking about um obviously um, a nephew or a niece so the tax threshold is set on that at uh 32 and a half thousand subject to correction. So that's the value that you can inherit or take as a gift uh, without paying tax. And thereafter, then you pay 33%. So that's a very heavy tariff once you get above that on the difference. The, the caller says it's a um, valuation of 150 on the house. So you're talking about that much in between. Uh, what's, the, what's the scenario or is there is there a way of, of, of dealing with it? where that won't arise. Well, there are exceptions to the rule, like there are in many situations. And one that arises in this case that it would certainly be worth looking at, that if this is going to be uh, and the primary home of this individual, and if they've lived in it for three years before, now they've mentioned it's a will, so it hasn't been transferred yet. If they live in it with, uh, for three years prior to the death of the deceased, and it becomes their family home, well, then that an exemption kicks in. Once they keep it for another six years they don't sell it within six years that'll be it'll be clawed back if you do that but if you live in it as your home uh, then you you would you'd be able to claim that exemption which is a very useful very useful tool so it is just to 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 bear in mind uh, that'd be what i would be looking at if, if it was if it was considering this situation and there's still time enough uh, probably to move on it as i say because the caller believes uh, that that has been left um, just, as an just in, a, in a reality situation. a transfer. So in a reality situation, uh, I, I think that the liability, according to your figure, is somewhere around thirty five, forty thousand euro, right? Like, who, how vigorously do they pursue you for that? I mean, is that a, a bill that's you're instantly liable for, and they will pursue you for? I've never really heard of of sort of what happens next in in those scenarios. Yeah. Yeah, well, what, what happens next is it, 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 not that palatable, uh, Greg, usually, and, for, and, right. and, and just that, that's what arises. If, if a death like that triggers in, the revenue are quite entitled to, to collect it. Now, if there's nothing there and the point you are sort of hinting at, well, how do you pay it to the house? Well, yeah, then you have to look at the asset and say, well, I might have to... You have, there has to be a return made on that gift mm. or inheritance at the end of at the next uh, uh, financial year, that year end, so that that their returns made to the revenue and that triggers then the tax and then they would they will raise that as a liability now how they go about collecting it that's entirely a matter for themselves but even if they didn't want to force a sale of the house they could convert it into a judgment and register it as a charge so if the caller was then going to go to a bank to get a mortgage that would be there ahead of them so it wouldn't be very attractive for a lending mm. institution point of view but i'd be saying there it probably thinking about it. well if that's the type of, uh, of of liability that triggers in the individual would be better at going to a bank first and then being able to fund it maybe raising a small loan or mortgage i know it's 33 odd thousand but it's still a dwelling house and a significant asset so by by raising a mortgage or against it then and so they can sort out the liability to the revenue that leaves them with an asset all right have to pay back the mortgage but they would hopefully be able to live with that sort of yeah. on, on a monthly rate. They'd have a 150-odd euro. The reality is, yeah. though, 
that it is collectible okay. and it is collected. You need to be out ahead of it, really, actually, by the science. Absolutely, things, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying. A, a bit of forward planning, maybe have a chat with whoever you know would you, know, you would know in that in that particular area. But it, it's not too late. And if you are out ahead of it and do it right, and a bit of financial planning, you know, it mightn't kick in at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more on wills, actually, before we have a, another one on a different issue. We have a large family. My mum went into a nursing home and has left our family home to just one child. This has already happened by transfer of deeds to that person's name. Now, this house is being rented out. Can this be done? Um, yes. Um, on the face of that question, I don't see any, any reason for it not being done and, and, and the person acting quite lawfully in doing so in that. They have said that the transfer has already been completed. Now, for, for a transfer uh, from one party to another in family, uh, there's a requirement since around um, 2013 or, or somewhere around then that you need two legal representatives, one to represent the person who is the donor giving it away and the other one who, who is receiving it. Um, so that keeps everything right. And obviously, uh, the, if the, uh, the transfer and the re registration has gone through, it's the individual who is the owner who is renting it. So I, on, I, as it's phrased, I don't see I don't see an issue with that. If it, was, if it was a situation where the transfer has not gone ahead, well then, then there might be a little bit more involved. What happens if you own a property and have a fence around it? Our fence has been knocked down constantly. This is at great cost for the people to repair. It'll cost €1,200 Euro for concrete posts. Who's left to pay for it? The cars were actually pulled out, but they never say who they are. They don't come and tell you they've knocked your fence. So this is obviously on the side of a road. Cars leaving the road, tossing the fence, um, and and the person doesn't necessarily know it's who's not, doing it's, it. It's not neighbourly. It's not neighbourly activity. No. Um, uh, uh, and uh, you can see where they're coming from. Uh, the responsible party, and uh, going back to where we started, it's an, it's an insurance matter, really. It's a claim against um, the uh, insurer of the vehicle that crashed in, into the fence, uh, and the the owner obviously would be cited. Um, so the, the point I think that arises in practical terms is to identify the vehicle that's involved, etc. And how do you go doing about that? Go how do you go about that? Uh, and does have to be used in some form of investigation or maybe some type of um, um, CCTV coverage or whatever. But it does give rise to a claim. If that happens, it's an accident and, and obviously maybe unfortunate, but it gives rise to a third party claim against the vehicle, whoever is responsible for the vehicle that, that uh, demolished the fence in the first place. And yep. the costing should be got of it and, and then pursued. Yeah, and also if it's a surrounding a house, there's a possibility, depending on the home insurance uh, policy they have, that, that the repair of that fence might be covered. But this, the people are saying well, this is happening yes, all the time. Yes, yeah, it would. It, it may very well, and that's a good enough point to make. But the insurer of that won't be too happy with no, that because course. they'll be saying, well, look, it's not, the, it's not their insurer who mm -hmm. caused this mm -hmm. damage. It's a third party. So if, it, and that'd be a very comprehensive type of plan you would have now if it covered a third party damage in your property. But let's say it did. That insurer would likely then pursue a claim if they could at all identify the vehicle and the owner of it yeah. against them. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, that, and you'd want to look very clearly at your insurance policy to be sure that you would be able to claim on the home cover for somebody else's damage. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. Lastly, neighbour has five dogs. They're constantly barking, Seamus. Uh, when the owner is not there. They don't bark as much when the owner is there. Now, this caller, out of desperation, has contacted the dog warden, but the barking is still happening. Have you any yeah. advice, Seamus? It's a very it's a very awkward situation. And it can be common enough. Um, is it creating a nuisance? And it's ruin it might be ruining the enjoyment of their own property and their own home. So they, if it is getting to that stage, you're talking probably about... Um, they've gone to, I was going to suggest the, the dog warden to have a word with them and, and see what, where they can move on from there. But if not, uh, you're talking about some type of, some type of claim and, and looking for damages regarding, regarding nuisance, uh, where you go with it, you're going to be investing a lot of money in it. Well, my advice in these situations has been for years is, is be real, be practical, you know, be neighborly. Um, I know, again, it's, it sounds like common sense, but there's not that much of it about. But if, if it can be adopted, it'll save people an awful lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a runner. they would probably a dog lover, and it'd be like going around and insulting uh, no, it, it sounds like one that you could degenerate to 
solicitor's letter and then you're taking it from there, you know, and trying to mount some sort of a case and saying, well, you know, this is this is actual nuisance now and it's causing distress to the family and all the rest of it. So you better do something about it and then challenging that and bringing that down the court route and invest money in it and maybe getting measuring the noise and everything else that goes with it and uh, get very technical and get quite expensive. Yeah. Build your own house in the middle of nowhere. But you can't do that now either anyway. Okay. Uh, Seamus, listen, thank you very much indeed for your time as always. Seamus Gunn and McLaughlin Gunn uh, and Co. Remelton and Letter Kenny. You can search online uh, and get all the contact details or actually just go straight to the website, Seamus. Just as handy, Greg, just as handy, gun.ie, gunnygallsolicitor.ie. G U N N. Thanks very much indeed. Seamus Gunn there of McLaughlin uh, Gunn and Co. Uh, Seamus back with us. I don't, is Seamus on every three or four weeks? Caroline, is it three or four? I don't know. She's not listening to me. She's on the call to someone. How often is Seamus actually on? Is it once a month? Oh, it's the first Friday of every month. How long have I been doing this show? Uh, I've only just twigged that. All right, uh, lads and lassies, thems and days, uh, there is a half an hour to go before our lines close. We've two and a half thousand pounds in car, cold, hard cash uh, to give away. Um, at 11.30. So you can go onto our website, highlandradio.com, buy your tickets there. €10 Euro is the max. You will pay for a ticket. You can get 6 for 50 10 for 80 and uh, you'll be in the draw for €2,500 at half past 11. Now, if that's not good enough, you will also be in the draw for €5,000 in cash next Friday and a €10,000 home makeover package thanks uh, in association with our friends at Foy's okay so two and a half grand to give away today effectively 15 grand to give away next Friday you've got about half an hour to get uh, your tickets give us a call if that helps 074 91 25,000 okay we're going to be finding out exactly uh, because we watch the weather forecasts right and it doesn't necessarily always tell the tale of what we can expect here in the northwest so we're going to get a specific storm Kathleen uh, forecast for you what you can or cannot expect uh, over the course of the weekend so stay right where you are that's coming up with Alan after these For day-to-day -day healthcare needs generations have trusted the experienced staff at McGee's Chemist Letterkenny from coughs and colds to aches and pains from vitamin supplements to first aid essentials McGee's have what you need when you need it with a full prescription service available daily McGee's Chemist, Main Street, Letterkenny. For healthcare help and advice you can always trust. Are your small appliances due an upgrade? Irwin Expert Electrical, your ultimate destination for all things electrical. From stylish toasters and kettles to innovative coffee machines and air fryers. Or elevate your tech game with our selection of smartwatches, iPads, laptops and phones and TVs from all your top brands. Stay connected with Irwin Expert Electrical, Larry Kenny and Bunkrana. Mixed messages on fodder supports. For more in your Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. Department and Minister at odds over how to help farmers as spring deteriorates. We have key advice for farmers on on-off grazing, managing delayed turnout and what to do about silage fertiliser. Demand continues to exceed supply in lamb trade. Farmer fury over government support for BVD programme. We talk to the suckler farmer breeding four euros per kilo weanlings. Plus, we look at how the vacant home renovation grant is paid. All inside this week's Irish Farmer's Journal. Join Homeland Nether Kenny's Garden Super Saturday this Saturday, 6th of April. Meet the expert Homeland Garden Centre team and enjoy exclusive offers in store, including Homeland Lawn, Feed and Weed. Buy two bags, get two and a half litre Homeland Lawn Hero free. Mobactor, Moss Remover, 20 kg, buy two for 65 euro. FCO, 18 inch lawnmower, now 449 euro, save 100. All this and more, see homeland.ie. Here at Tesco Mobile, we've gone and opened a new phone shop in Letterkenny High. A great wee spot now for a few good deals, like saving €320 Euro when you buy the iPhone 13 for €129.99 Euro on our €35 Euro plan high. So why not stop in and say hi, uh, hello, to Tesco Mobile High. This is Supermarket Mobile. Applies to new bill pay customers on our €35 Euro per month plan. 24-month contract offer ends 1st of May 2024. T's and C's apply. See tescomobile.ie. Highland Radio weather updates with McElhenney's. Support local at McElhenney's. With 53 years experience in fashion, beauty and home, we're here for you. Plus, enjoy M-Card rewards when you shop in-store at McElhenney's Ballet Buffet. 
OK, so we've got another named Storm. Storm Kathleen will reach Donegal uh, tomorrow. Alan O'Reilly from Carlo Weather joins us. Alan, thanks so much for your time. I do appreciate it. No problem at all. Good to be here. Alan, over the last wee while, it seems most of the weather is hitting the south or affecting the south worst and moving northerly. What, what, what uh, you know, and, and I suppose normally we hear weather arriving into the northwest and moving down the country. What's happening that, that uh, has us in that situation? Yes, yeah, so we have a jet stream that's a bit further south and we have these low pressure systems which are moving up from the south, coming from the kind of southwest of Ireland and then tracking north into the south of Ireland and moving up, as you say. And usually that means that the south of the country has seen the brunt of the weather, um, especially with rainfall, with Malin and Macehead the only two stations that were below average rainfall for the month of March. So we should be all heading to Donegal on our holidays for the spring, I think, by the sounds of it, uh, Greg, based on that. But Storm Kathleen is a little bit different. It's it's going to track up along the west coast and it is going to bring, well, it will bring it into the south and the west. It's going to bring it right across the country. So it is going to be a storm that's going to impact the whole island, the mm-hmm. entire 32 counties. I see some of the maps that you posted. There seems to be a particular concentration of rain in the south and, and southwest. Uh, so what does the uh, weather have in store for us here in the northwest then over the coming couple of days? So you're looking at very strong winds um, tomorrow from early morning, really, right through the day. And the unusual part about it for the northwest is it's going to stay very windy even into Sunday morning. So while the yellow warning comes into operation at 5 a.m. and ends at 8 p.m., it is actually still going to be very windy in the northwest, especially right through Saturday night into Sunday and even Sunday up until around lunchtime, you're still looking at winds in excess of gusting over 90 kilometres an hour in Donegal. So we may well see uh, a wind warning possibly for the northwest that could be extended. The rainfall will mainly come before Storm Kathleen tonight and again then um, there will be showers tomorrow, but there will be good sunny spells as well and then some more heavy showers on Sunday before, unfortunately, more very heavy rain moves up um, from the south again on Sunday night into Monday. So we have very heavy rainfall. And that's why the weather charts I've posted show the high rainfall totals by Monday evening. We're looking at over 100 millimetres in the southwest. Now, the northwest will escape a lot of that, but you're still looking at, you know, possibly 30 to 40 millimetres of rain, which obviously on top of saturated ground is not going to help the farmers um, or anybody trying to do any horticulture, etc. outdoors. Yeah. I mean, it's just having a shocking impact on, on particularly on, 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 on uh, potatoes and the potential potato harvest. Alan, uh, obviously, you know, once you sort of go into next week and beyond, it, it, it's educated guesswork to some extent the further out you go Uh, any indications of anything positive uh, from a weather perspective yeah so we have kind of unsettled weather up until the middle of next week but the weather models are starting to trend towards some high pressure trying to move up from the south around the middle of the month so around 10 days time now as you say once you go that far it is a little bit more uncertain and at this moment in time it is hope I should also mention that, you know, high pressure moving up from the south doesn't always reach Donegal. So it may be that the south does get a break from the rainfall, but maybe not the northwest. But look, we live in hope that maybe from around the middle of the month, we will see a change in the weather patterns and high pressure might well extend to all areas. So it it might be just enough hope to keep the farmers going for another 10 days. Fingers crossed. All right, Alan, listen, thank you very much as always. Greatly appreciated. Alan O'Reilly there of Carlo Weather. uh, And you can check out Carlo Weather on um, a plethora of social medias, uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, X, and uh, threads as well, actually. Right, okay. John Wilkie's with us now. Hi, John. Greg Hughes. How are you this morning? I'm doing broadly okay, actually. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, You're looking right, I see you on there. Ah, good man. Now, come here, John. (laughs) You've been out and about looking at things far more pretty than me. I'm always out and about, Greg. (laughs) Far more pretty than me. I'm always out and about doing stuff, you know, and... You were out at Errigal recently, and, and, and I mean, you're just yes. the latest voice on this one. I'm, we're going to have to get somewhere with this yes. eventually. Talk to me about your experience and, and, and what Before you Before I phone the council, I have to phone yourself first. Of you know course, what I'm saying? Yeah, I told Caroline right that. Right listen. Absolutely. But come here. I know there's all sorts of things going on in the world, and we have lots of issues in the country and the county, but we have a big issue down at Mount Errigal where people are using the mountain as a toilet. 
and we need to maybe get a dry toilet. I was talking to a few other people about it there, mm. and I'm, a, I'm an advocate of Virgil because it's in the county, it's the tallest mountain, blah, 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 751 metres, 200 and whatever thousand feet, or 200,000 feet, 2,000 feet, whatever, no, or more, and a lot of visitors, and they have nowhere to go to the toilet. Oh, you know, so... Um, so, it, like, I mean, at the bottom, obviously, it would make sense because people could, uh, you know, go to the bathroom before they took up this climb. Is I, I haven't been up it yet, John. Shame, I'm ashamed to say, but I will. Uh, well, come here now. We'll have to organise that, Greg. Yeah, for sure. No bother. Uh, and I mean that genuinely. Definitely. But is, is there an option midway Good. up for, for some sort of a facility? Like, this is, uh, you know, the jewel in the crown phrase is often used, isn't it? But this truly is. And oh. there's very few things that... Uh, are embraced as much by visitors as they are by locals as well. well absolutely, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually talking about people, the locals, all the time. I mean, I, I met a man there. He's 80 years of age, coming down at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's lots of people doing that. You know, it's it's that's great now with the walk and the path. And I know they spent about 700 and up to a million euro on the path. But it'd be amazing just to get that uh, car park extended and maybe get a few portaloos to see how it goes. And I know there's a village there and I know they have a committee and all that, but it's just when people come down, they want to go up the hill, back down again, into their car and away. But then we have an issue now with traffic because there's lots of people doing it. It's safer now with the new path and mm-hmm. everything. But uh, it's just, it'll be lovely to see maybe some of the councillors coming on there and talking about it. Maybe mm-hmm. see could they give it a wee bit input, you know? I see from, from your picture, there's probably about 20, 22 cars in the car park, uh, and then the cars start queuing up, don't they, on the far side of the road? Uh, yes. And it's kind of a quick part of the road, whether we like it or not. Uh, and yes. I don't know when this was taken, but I don't think it's at peak time this picture was taken either, John. So No, no, that's, that was Tuesday there after yeah. Easter, so it'll be quiet. So that's, that's, that's quiet. But the car on, park on is Arigal. full. That's a quiet. The car park is full that's already. That's full the night. Yeah. Yes, that's full from nine o'clock in the morning. So look, it is warranted. Maybe some of the councillors would need to say, "Listen, we'll get the finger out here. Maybe try the portal loose to see how it works." And I know there's issues with rubbish. Then and I know all that kind of crap. It's maintenance. I think we. Ah, oh, Jesus! We listen a minute. Yeah, it always comes down to that. But I look, think. all I'm trying to say is really, and I'm so sorry. It's just, it's just an issue, and it's rubbish, and it's you know. But it'll be amazing. I think you get the finger out now. Maybe. A couple of portaloos to see how it goes. Because, uh, as I say, I met people last year from California. Six ladies, actually. And they mm-hmm. said, oh, could we use the restroom around here? You know, they're like the Americans. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we don't have one. Oh. So, you have people coming from all over the place to claim our highest, and we have no facility for them. Yeah. Shameful, really, isn't it? You know... We should find. Well, we should be able to find a way. Yeah, even if you have to spend a penny to spend a penny. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's well, look, you know that's not. We shouldn't be afraid. Uh, of even in the town park, and another good facility. You know, there's a there's a restroom up there, whatever you toilet, and you know, and it would need to be done now. And the safety aspect, just take that onto it. That's mm-hmm. all. Mm. And also inclusion, because you know people have different abilities in terms of. Well, look, capacity to hold. I, I was talking to Jennifer Doherty there recently, and I think we're going to claim it now before she goes away to okay. Kilimanjaro again. Uh, so, you know, people with disabilities, you know, things like that there. If, we're, if we really want to include everybody, we should include everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm. And have you. the amenities for people. That's all. All right. You know? Okay, listen, thanks very much for that, John, as Keep always. Keep up the great work, Greg. Keep up the great climbing and all the stuff that you do. Take care. John Wilkie there. Um, listen, we've heard it. Oops, what have I dropped? We've heard the same thing so many times. Uh, are we edging any closer to a resolution? I don't know. Now, uh, a caller was on to us, or an emailer was on to say that I was hoping you guys uh, can give some awareness to the big charity quiz night that's happening on Friday the 19th of April. It's in Brown Bar, uh, Brown's Bar Crossroads. We're helping raise funds for Orla, the way to Donegal charity cycle, uh, cycle from Cork to Letterkenny. In turn, all funds we raise will be donated to Pieta House Letterkenny. We have some great prizes to raffle off on the night as well, such as a night away to Dublin for two, 
a night away to Galway for two. €200 Euro cash prize vouchers for Michael Henney's Donegal Oil, and that's just to name but a few. We've started selling tickets already online through the I Donate page because with some of the prizes, we thought this is the best way possible to maximise funds. This is where I was hoping you can share and maybe give a shout out on some of the shows to help promote the night. Now, of course we can. Uh, go to, uh, it's hard for me to read out uh, the link, but if you go to Mantis Crane's Raffle Fundraiser, you should come across the iDonate page there. It's the Mantis Crane's Raffle Fundraiser 2024. Uh, and also the quiz night. It's a big charity quiz night. Everyone loves a quiz, don't they? It's on Friday the 19th of April in Brown's Bar, Crossroads, uh, Donegal, if you want to support those charities. It is the 9 till noon show here on Highland Radio as we edge towards another weekend. I hope you're all uh, feeling well. Uh, Fanula Rabbit's going to be joining us very shortly, as is the man himself. Michael Leddy, that's all coming up as part of That's Entertainment. And also, we have €2,500 to give away. That's at half 11. To be in with a chance to win, and tickets are going into the draw drum as we speak, as people buy tickets, uh, you need to give us a buzz right now. Uh, preferably go to the website, highlandradio.com. As soon as you buy a ticket, it's instantly... Uh, allocated a number here and it goes straight into the draw drum by the way uh, so you can buy your tickets now on our website highlandradio.com or give us a call on 0749125000 9, but if you want to win two and a half grand at half eleven uh, or five grand next Friday and a 10,000 euro home makeover you need to be getting your tickets in the next 15 minutes Country Sundays at the Clanry Hotel Letterkenny. This Sunday 7th is Patrick Feeney and his band. Dancing 9 till 11. Admission 15 euro on the door. Coming Sunday 21st, it's Johnny Brady and his band. But this Sunday, don't miss Patrick Feeney at the Clanry Hotel Letterkenny. With Big Scoop Ice Cream at Kelly Steiner in Letterkenny, there's so much choice. From Bubblegum Blast to Oreo Crunch, named after Kelly's famous robot waiter, there's loads of flavours to choose from, or you can create your own. Treat the kids and the big kids to a yummy ice cream dessert at Kelly's Diner, Mountaintop, Letterkenny. Are you ready for massive savings with AEG at Irwin Expert Electrical? Purchase from now until the 14th of April and claim your cash back at aeg-offers.com. Experience top-notch appliances and enjoy the added perk of cash back delivered straight to your account within 28 days of approval. Elevate your home with AEG excellence and savings today. Don't miss out. AEG cash back at Irwin Expert Electrical, Letterkenny and Bunkrana. House Pride's £1 million warehouse stock clearance sale now on. Hundreds of sofas, dining and bedroom furniture in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Unbelievable price drops. Reclining suites from just £249. Sale now on. Visit our flagship store at Abercorn Square Strabane and House Pride Oma or online at houseproudfurnishings.com. At Hickey Clark and Langan Insurance Brokers, they compare quotes from all the leading insurers so you get a great price. Home, motor and van farm, holiday home, travel and liability insurance, they quote them all. So if the worst happens, you're covered. For a competitive insurance quote today, call Hickey Clark and Langan on 912 or pop into their office at Ballymacool Letter Kenny. Hickey Clark and Langan General Insurance is limited. Trading as Hickey Clark and Langan is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. County's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. Cracking conversation on the way in the next hour as part of That's Entertainment, so stay right where you are and get involved in uh, the conversation as well. But first, let's get a news update. We'll cross over now to Donald Kavanagh. Thank you, Greg. Good morning. Independent on Gold TV, Thomas Springle says he would consider supporting Simon Harris as Taoiseach if he promised to fully embrace and implement the People's Document published last week by defective bloc campaigners. However, Deputy Pringle told Greg on today's 9 till noon show he would have a number of serious questions, not least why the government hasn't done so already. The new Irish medical organisation president says non-consultant hospital doctors are under unsustainable pressure. An IMO survey found 77% of NCHDs report being pressurised by their employers to work extra shifts, leaving some working unsafe hours. The IMO's president, Donegal GP Dennis McCauley, says the government hasn't yet implemented an agreement already reached on the issue. 
Celda's Chief Operating Officer says there are significant challenges in recruiting a consultant endocrinologist for Letterkenny University Hospital. The consultant post has been vacant since August of last year with consultant services currently being provided 12 hours a week on an outpatient basis. Celta and hospital management say they remain fully committed to the further development and enhancement of diabetes services in Letterkenny. There has been a 90% rise in the level of investment fraud in Ireland. Over €25 million Euro was stolen from victims of investment frauds in 2023. That's almost equal to the figure from the previous two years combined. A project to address the needs of Moville and create a new vision for the town is being launched later this month. The Irish Architecture Foundation says the aim is to regenerate Moville and create the heritage of the future while respecting and complementing its built and natural environment. It's intended to address challenges including lack of public transport and digital infrastructure and a lack of viable meeting places, especially for young people. And plans to launch the first solar farm in space have passed a critical milestone. A beam of energy has been directed in a lab. Research carried out at Queen's University in Belfast could help deliver power that would see more than a million homes covered by the 2030s with a system of solar panels and mirrors in space. And we're back with news headlines again at 12 noon. Brilliant. I'd say they'll be able to power the train from Donegal to Dublin. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's about as likely to happen, I think. OK. Uh, we'll be back with... Thanks, Donald. We'll be back with more after these. The National Lottery Good Causes Awards celebrate the amazing work done in communities all over Ireland. We're now inviting entries for the 2023 awards, so if you've received National Lottery funding in the last five years, tell us all about the wonderful work you do, and don't be modest. There's a €100,000 win prizes on the night, and the food's not too shabby either. Closing date for entries is March 31st. You'll find out how to enter at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. Support responsibly. And a very good morning to you. You are very welcome along to That's Entertainment. And we have a, a blend today because we've got our own Fanula Rabbit joining us uh, remotely. Good morning to you, Fanula. How are you getting on? I'm good. Very good. Thank you. It's great to have you on board. And also we have... Uh, I'm messing with the head- headphones. No, I'm not. Yes, are oh, you not? Okay. <laughs> we also have, uh, I suppose you could say, Donegal's answer Uh-oh. to... What? <laughs> yeah. Donegal's answer to... I didn't come here to be insulted like this. I could go anywhere. I haven't I mean, said insult- it yet. I, could be ins- I haven't said it yet. <laughs> we also have Donegal's answer to Eddie the Eagle Edwards. It's my... It's Michael the Tit... <laughs> Letty. You can choose your colour. Uh, are we going to be taking off air? <laughs> Hello, Greg. No, it's, a t- it's a bird. It is a bird. I know it's Eddie a bird. the Eagle. Weirdly, I was looking at the Eddie the Eagle... IMDb page last night because I was looking oh at Oh my god, that's freaky. Dexter, it is freaky. Dexter Fletcher. See the end of that cable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. right. Yeah. Is it plugged in? Yeah, I'm going to unplug it. I'll do that now. Yeah, do that now. You well, you're trying to finish there. Okay, so um, we are going to be discussing all things uh, telly, stage, big screen, and all that with our guests, Michael and Fanula. We want you involved in the conversation as well. Uh, 086 60 25,000 WhatsApps and texts. What's the volume like? All good? Let me see. Can you hear me through the headphones? I can hear nothing through the headphones. What about now? Oh, sit. anything? Yes, coming up. Uh, I'll adjust the. No, no, the wee volume control where you plug the headphones ah, in. Okay, okay. Yeah, we could have done this in advance. Look, Fanula's looking at me as if to say, "Am I paying you for this?" Uh, well, it's it's not that. It's like how often has Michael been in that studio and he didn't learn how to use the microphone, use the headphones? Yeah. Okay, how? Okay, I turned it up. Now, how do I turn it back down again? <laughs> Be nice. Hello, Fanula. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Right, OK, uh, before we get into it, right, uh, there's two things I want to mention. A special request. Uh, we want to say a very, very best to uh, Linda and Derek's daughter, Emma McGrorty and Mark Graham. They're getting married today in St. Eunan's Cathedral, Letterkenny, and that's from us all at Highland Radio. You went through this not so long ago, uh, daughter getting married, did you, uh, Fanula? What's it like? I did. Oh, it's a mixture of all kind of emotions and things. I ended up being very stalwart until suddenly I was 
bawling, crying, walking down the aisle. So all the photographs of me walking her down the aisle look like I'm actually holding in an emission. It's <laughs> but, you've gone, but you've just gone wild soft all of a sudden. I know. You know. It's just, uh, I know, and now I have my grandson, so it's even more. It's even worse. <laughs> even worse. But no, it's wonderful for Linda. They'll have an amazing day. And Emma is really um, like a Highland baby as her parents met through Highland Radio. So uh, uh, her Highland family wishes her uh, a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, and just one other, a little update on a nice note. Uh, Emma, who was a guest on the show today, the wee Doneg- Donegal Mammy, as she's known, she was on with us uh, earlier in the week and she was talking about um, uh, talking about her children and one of her daughters were required a scan, um, and it was it was really it was a really moving conversation. But just an update on that: an anonymous person uh, following that conversation has come forward to a family friend and donated the cost for Michaela to get the scan. And Emma says, I can't thank all at Highland Radio enough for getting uh, the story out there. Okay, so that's brilliant. Emma, I hope that's given you and the family a lovely lift heading into the weekend. Shall I do one more? Could you wish uh, Marie Gill of Chris Lamore Burnfoot a very happy 50th birthday today from all her family and friends, her work colleagues in the harbour in Bunkrana. Congrats on half a century, half a century not out, of making the world (laughs) brighter. Best wishes from all your friends. Fabulous. And 50, 50 and fabulous. 50 is no age. It's no age. No age at all. Uh, no, things have changed. Right, OK. Uh, let me see. We'll go to you, Fanula, first. Um, I'll take it in the order you put it in. We'll start with Channel 4, Big Mood. I've seen yes. a lot of trailers for this. It's a comedy, isn't it? Ugh. Now, it is being advertised as a comedy. Oh, this is not a good start. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is being advertised as a comedy. And I, and not just I, but a lot of the critics are kind of saying... It's not it's it's not a comedy that you sort of sit down and laugh to. It's more that occasionally witty barbs and you know they find themselves in funny situations. But you're never you're never going to laugh out loud about it. But it, it, in that it is very good. But I'm kind of a bit cautious about it. I've only watched uh, the two of them that were just aired. Um, it started last week and it's on uh, tonight, I think, again, is the, is the next two are going to be on. It stars Clodagh Coughlin, who is from uh, Derry Girls, that people will know, but she's also actually from Ornmore, which is where I am now here in Galway. Um, her sisters went to school with my sisters, so we always have a, a big interest in her career here. Could you uh, pick that up off the place. floor, though? Because I think, uh, think Fanula dropped a name. I don't know this girl I feel at all. So bad. I don't actually, know her at all. He actually I know lent her over. Big sisters, the wee don't. The wee don't lent over to pick the name up for like, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so this is her new thing that's out. So she has this out, and then obviously at the end of this month, Bridgerton is out, and she's going to be one of the key characters in Bridgerton this year. Big Mood is herself and a girl Lydia West, and they're best friends, and they're living in London. She's an all author and kind of actress uh, are trying to be more than uh, successful and her friend then runs a pub and what uh, becomes apparent over the course of uh, very quickly is that um, uh, that that she suffers from that Olivia uh, Nicola Cotton's uh, character suffers from uh, bipolar disorder so you can see when she's kind of a little bit manic and then when she has her downtime and that, you know, as her mood swings. So that's really what it's based about. It is good. I know um, I watched it with my daughter and she's obviously way younger than me and she enjoyed it. And she's probably more the audience that is kind of set for her. I'd be very concerned about where it's going to go, though, as it deals with. I mean, I'm sure it does deal with it sensitively, but, you know, one of the lines in it was where the, the friend is having problems with this pub that she runs and, you know, Nicola Coughlin's character offers to help her and she's like, no, you're the one that has the issues and I'm the one that, you know, makes everything right. You're the one that has problems and I'm the one that fixes everything. And you wonder about their relationship and how that's going to work out for um, throughout the course of the thing. But it is, it's very... Um, uh, nice. It's a half hour. There's two on every time that it comes on. I think they're dropping the whole lot onto the Channel 4 um, app, which, uh, if you don't mind watching a bit of ads, is, isn't is too horrendous to use. But uh, it's it's enjoyable. And yep. the, the acting and everything is very good in it. There's a lot of characters in it. It's kind of like a crazy 30s sort of an idea. You know, the way they're old enough that they should know better, but still kind of, you know... And not still into the partying and that kind of thing. That's sort of the vibe that you get from it. Any but interest it, in this, Michael? Enjoyable. 
No. Yeah, I think it's not either. <laughs> uh, but I didn't watch Dairy Girls, so I probably need to start that before I start yeah. talking about doing other things as well. All right, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dairy Girls was so good. I know, yeah, I yeah. Being told, and you'd yeah, actually yeah. love it because there's a lot of re- cultural references to the 80s, which yeah. I know Michael and I love the 80s. We... We, we wallow in the 80s. But there's a lot of... A bit before my time. <laughs> well, we're very young, you see. Yeah. We're, we're very, very young. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to have to get a pair of glasses. But uh, it's not because there's anything wrong with my eyes. It's just on solidarity with you and Fanula. <laughs> uh, there'll probably be clear glass in them. Probably, probably, probably yeah, just, no. But it's just to sort of say, right, like you know what? Like Clark Kent's yeah, glasses. Yeah, make you yeah. feel better. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. Big Mood on Channel 4. And, and I have to say again, uh, I, I really the Channel 4 app to me is used probably equally to all the other apps. You know, it really is yeah. quite usable, mm, the ad, mm, and the ads aren't too intrusive, you know. Um, Happy Friday, says the listener. Watch the remake of Roadhouse. Would give it zero out of ten, a complete ah. waste of time. Patrick Swayze's original is a classic. Conor McGregor shouldn't be let anywhere near a film set again. Now, I half-watched this, uh, um, and, and I, I intend to go back to it, but it's just not good. Yeah, it just isn't any good. I've been told that his performance is, but even the setup to before he comes into it, yeah. is just not engaging or good. Or you don't feel it's a hero. You don't care, and you're watching it going, "Why is he doing that?" It does. Some of it doesn't make sense. It's it has the potential to be really, really good. And then when Conor McGregor comes on, like I know he hams it up in real life, but it's just, yeah, it's over the top. Fanula, you look like a lady who's watched it. No, I started watching it and I had to give up on it as well. I loved the original. Okay. And to be honest, it came out in a time when I was of an age where I was only into what was then described as chick flicks. And yet everybody loved this because Swayze had the ability to be that kind of swarthy leading man as well as the rough, tough, you know, kind yeah, of fighting yeah. guy. I'm not sure if Gyllenhaal... He's very good at the rough top, you know what I mean? But I don't know, can he pull off the kind of, you know, heart-sensitive kind of thing that Swayze did that, you know, gave but that character so much that, balance. You've seen it I in other films. I bothered making a new one. Do you know when you see other films whereby the character is really, really tough, but they're mm. sort of reluctant to be drawn into confrontation and they can do it really well? Mm. He doesn't do it in this very well. Yeah. It's hard to describe. It's like you go, well, why are you sitting there? They're paying you 500 quid a week to sort these fights out and you're just sitting watching on with a smirk on your face. Yeah. It, it's just not, it doesn't pull resume. you in. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I kind of, I got about 10 minutes into the Conor McGregor part of the film. You know, the action is pretty good, but it just, it's it's OT. Uh, it's OTT and none of it makes a, a great deal of sense. And it could be one of those films for Nula that, People say, have you seen Roadhouse? And you say, it's an opportunity to plug the original. You say, forget Roadhouse, go and watch the original because oh it's really God. good. So it could be one of those that gives that... Amazon would have been better off to dig it out of whatever file it's sitting in mm. and uh, get the dust off it and stick that back up on its uh, cha- on its uh, platform because it was brilliant like, mm. and it had an amazing cast and everything. It really was. Uh, I'm going to, of course, forget the guy's name. Sam something is the other guy that was in it with them. But it was amazing, so it was really, mm. really good. The first, the original is fantastic. There was no need to make another. Yeah. Sometimes they, they, sometimes you like to see what they do with them when they make remakes of them. But mm. bring up the original and mm. just see, you know let people see what it, what it's supposed to be like. Yeah, and I'm in the situation where I haven't seen the original, so I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Biased to put, putting this one mm. down because oh it didn't match the expectations yeah. of the first but I think Michael this was a stream streaming first film uh, and I do worry about that a lot of them are you know they throw a lot of money at them and there's big explosions and big actors and they're a lot of the time pretty poor yeah they're not great yeah like I'm thinking of that uh, that Ryan Reynolds one the, what is it Red remember there's there's another one on the way as well. wasn't, that wasn't terrible but uh, yeah it wasn't fantastic wasn't either, fantastic either yeah it just as a Ryan Reynolds fan what did you think of Red Notice Vanilla? Did you enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, no, sadly, uh, uh, even as a Ryan Reynolds fan, I disagree. And it should have been amazing because it was, I love Ryan Reynolds. I love mm. The Rock. And it didn't really. For the, when, when you list those names, it should have been Better. awesome. Yeah, yes. And yes. What's her, it was Wonder Woman, Godot. What's Gal Gadot, yeah, 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 yeah. But she's in a lot of things. Yeah, but the three of them together, it should have been fantastic. But it, I don't know. Now, maybe it's set it up. I'm, I'm still going to watch the second one when it comes out. But so I think there's going to be three. Yeah, they they've said three. Uh, I may watch it as well. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what Moon is. <laughs> Look at you. You're all I mean, kind of indifferent. Since yeah, I'm sort tits. of like, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, keep your calls and comments coming. 0860 25,000. Uh, best of luck to Abby Harkin at her national semi final bout this morning at the National Stadium in Dublin. Let us know how Abby got on. It's an amazing thing to get to the semi final, win, lose, or draw. Um, we were talking about uh, actually one other thing I want to mention. Uh, due to Storm Kathleen weather warning, the Letterkenny Palestine witness against genocide at the station roundabout scheduled for tomorrow when Letterkenny is cancelled. It'll continue though every Saturday thereafter for the foreseeable future. Uh, can you say good luck to the Fanad Under 11 mixed basketball team playing in the county final tomorrow in Ballyshannon from all at Fanad Community Games? Uh, thanks, Lee. That comes in from Tony McCarry. Well, Tony, Lee didn't mention it. I did. So there you go. What does that say about Lee? Uh, nothing. He just didn't get it. We got it a little bit late. OK, back with more from our friends Michael and Fanula after we take this quick break. New this week in Home Store and more. All mattress protectors are all half price. But better hurry, because when all our half price mattress protectors are gone, they're gone. Also, all outdoor heating and all ironing boards are still all half price. But when all the half price outdoor heating and all the half price ironing boards are gone, they're definitely gone. Drop by your local home store and more, or visit us online at homestoreandmore.ie. New store now open in Frascati Centre, Black Rock. Home store and more. A happy home. Discover full and part-time courses from Level 2 to Master's Degree at the College of Agriculture, Food and Rural Enterprise. CAFRI, Northern Ireland Specialist Agri-Food and Land-Based College with campuses at Greenmount, Antrim, Lowry, Cookstown and Enniskillen. Study a course in food, agriculture, horticulture, equine, floristry, veterinary, nursing, land-based engineering or business. Make a difference. Book now to attend an open day, Tuesday 9th to Saturday 13th of April. Visit cafre.ac.uk. It all begins with a thrump as the needle nestles into a deep valley of vinyl. Sizzle and crackle turns into fizzle and scratch. And the mesmerizing rotations of pop and hiss and... Ah, the crackle of a vinyl record. Just one of the ordinary sounds rediscovered by Sean. Whatever sounds you've lost, our hearing experts could help you find them again. Search Specsavers Hearing. Craving a taste of bliss by the water? The Water's Edge in Rathmullen. Join us from 10am to 12pm daily and sample our delicious new breakfast menu. We also have a daily lunch special from 12pm. Or why not sample our dinner menu from 4pm? The Water's Edge Rathmullen, where tranquility and good food come together. Celebrate exceptional businesses in Donegal. Nominate your favourite for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with McElhenney's Department Store. Our Customer Service Awards celebrate the businesses that go above and beyond to provide excellent customer service. To nominate your favourite business, simply visit highlandradio.com, fill out the nomination form and tell us why you love this business. The winners will receive recognition at our special award ceremony on June the 9th. Plus, they'll have the satisfaction of knowing that they made a positive impact on their customers. Nominate now. Nominations close 23rd of April. All right, in about 10 minutes' time, one of you is going to win €2,500, where we go to Fanula's Trombola and pull out a ticket. Stay there for that. We're going to have more from Michael and Fanula very shortly, but first I want to say uh, a good morning to comedian Chris Kent, uh, who is performing in On Green on Theatre uh, tomorrow night at 8pm. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, how are you? Good to have Thanks you on very the much show. For having me. Quite a run from Cork, the Rebel County, all the way to Letterkenny for a show. It is, yeah, absolutely. It better be worth it now. I'm expecting yeah. huge things, you know. <laughs> as, are, as are the audience, Chris. <laughs> yes, yeah. Look, with the, they're, they're as responsible as I am, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes two to so, tango. Come here, um, you've been at the, the comedy game for, for quite some time now. Is it 10, 12 years that uh, you, you would call yourself officially a, a performing comedian? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I started when I was, I started about 19 years ago and I did it full time for about 12 years, actually. And then I took a little break, a sort of a forced break, I suppose, with the pandemic. And then I'm sort of back down, back on the road now for the last two years again. So, mm. um, yeah, long time. Very, very depressing when you think about how long I'm doing it. No, that's know? fantastic. Wait you <laughs> how long I've been doing this nonsense for. Chris, um, in, in terms of just, you know, I know you love going out on the stage and meet your audience and all that kind of stuff, but I was just, I was watching the show last night, um, 
And I was thinking the life of a comedian in this country versus the likes of England in terms of opportunities. You know, it can be very hard, I think, in Ireland to break into the TV scene here or what have you. And I was watching uh, some of the mm. panel shows. You know, there's a plethora of panel shows uh, on in Britain and Channel 4, there Channel is. 5, Dave, and all of those type of stuff. And I was just thinking, you know, you get yourself a bit of a name, then you get yourself in the telly and one thing follows another. There's not really that option for, for comedians. Some break through uh, to the British TV scene, of course, Chris, but... It, 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 can, it can feel like a glass ceiling at times, can it? Doing the doing the circuit in Ireland. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. For years and years, um, it, it did feel like that. To be honest with you, with the TV stuff, but um, magically now you don't need it anymore. Yeah, because uh, you know most of um, most of the comedians in Ireland we're not depending on TV anymore. It's purely down to your own following and your social media, and that is after just changing the game completely. Um, to be honest with you, it's probably more beneficial to you than than any of the, the UK TV is to have a strong social media following yourself, you know what I mean? There you go, that's so, interesting, yeah. Yeah, literally, I mean, this tour that I'm doing now is, is just so much bigger than anything else I've ever done. Um, and it's all down to myself sort of filming and producing my own shows and then cutting them up afterwards and putting them all online and basically finding an audience, you know, and people find me and uh, it's kind of snowballed like that. So the TV is great and it would be fantastic. I wouldn't say no to it, yeah. but it's a real relief at the moment now not to have to, you know, I'd kind of half given up on it anyway, mm. but it's a real relief to just say I really don't don't need it at yeah, all now. Master, and if, it, all, if it comes own... along... Yeah, you're master of your own de- yeah. uh, uh, destiny and, and, and independence as well. So the show you bring into Letterkenny yeah. tomorrow night is back at it. Uh, and, and and your exactly. style, is it that you... Is it Well, how do you describe your style? Because it, 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 it draws on your real-life experience. Yeah, I would say it's storytelling. Um, a lot of people would say it's deadpan, uh, I think. <laughs> you know, uh, it's storytelling, deadpan. Uh, I like... I like Kind of, I like the hour. I like, I like doing my own shows because I, so I sort of get to take my time and build up these routines, you know, that you don't necessarily get to do in the shorter club sets. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's very hard to describe your own style. It's a bit weird uh, as a comedian to describe to describe yourself, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, it is. Uh, but you do draw on, uh, you, you do draw back at it. I mean, I think I that the title actually really tells its tale, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. No, I draw my everyday life. And it's about, to be honest with you, it's about going full-time in the comedy again, taking the risk and going for something that you love, you know what I mean? So it was actually harder this time around because the last time I became a full-time comic was in 2009 when there was a recession and I was basically, I couldn't get any work. So I was kind of pushed rather than jumped uh, from my day job, you know? I couldn't get any work, so and I happened to be doing comedy at the time. Whereas this time around, I, you know, I really had to hand in my notice. There's a lot of demand. Uh, I could have easily kept my job as an electrician, but um, at the end of the day, it's kind of like not what I wanted to do, you know. So I really, I really just, um, that's kind of what the show is about, about just not, just, just going for it anyway, you know. Brilliant. Okay. Listen, it sounds great. The brilliant thing about On Green on Theatre too, it attracts uh uh, the, the best talent from all around the country. So we're delighted you're making the way up from uh, Cork and we look forward to welcoming yes. you tomorrow night. Tickets are available. Not many, though, so get on it right now. It's uh, Chris, There's only a few, yeah. Yeah, exactly. that's it. Chris Kent performing There's it on Green yeah. on Theatre tomorrow night from 8pm. Uh, so what a great way to spend your Saturday that's night. It. Good stuff, Chris. Safe journey up. Would love to see you there. Thanks All for right, having take me, Take care. Thank Bye-bye, you. Chris. Our pleasure. Right. Um, the remake of uh, Roadhouse was good, but nothing is ever as good as the original movie or uh, characters. But you see, I'm coming at it, uh, Michael, whereas I didn't see the original and it still was poor, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Sam Elliott, gravel voice himself, sexiest voice alive. Sam Elliott's brilliant, yeah. Okay, yeah, I love Sam Elliott. That's who you were referencing. You were referencing for yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant He was in the original. He was, uh, I think, Patrick Swayze's brother in it, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, which would be a rare rarity in, 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 all, in all reality. <laughs> 
question. In fairness, it would. <laughs> I saw her on her phone. I know she's Googled it. Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> I know. Ghostbusters, um, Michael. Yes. Uh, we flagged this, didn't we? And you've probably seen ago. it. We went to see it. Myself and Felina went to see the new Ghostbusters movie. And I also went to... I, I went, went nowhere. I watched the other one at home because the first one from a couple of years ago, the first Paul Rudd one, uh, is on Apple TV, and that's Ghostbusters Afterlife. So that was the one which brought new characters into the franchise. So I watched them as sort of a double bill, uh, middle of last week. So that one first, as I say, which is on Apple TV, um, very much enjoyed it. I would have been a fan of Ghostbusters back in the 1980s. Did not like the um, 2015 reboot. And this one then returns to the original timeline and uh, just brings new younger characters in. I thought it was great fun. I thought it really set up the new characters very well. It did the threat aspect well. So you believe that these characters were in jeopardy, but you were still having a laugh. And I like those kind of movies where you're able to laugh along, but you're thinking, oh, OK, maybe maybe it'll all go wrong. Maybe they'll all die. But they won't really. It's a fantasy comedy. Then we went to the cinema uh, that same night to see the newest uh, iteration, which would be the fifth of the Ghostbusters franchise. Uh, this one is uh, Frozen Empire. This one is a different kettle of fish. Again, it's Paul Rudd and it's the kids again because it's all a newer generation. But it mixes and matches and brings back the familiar faces from the 1980s mm -hmm. version. It's... The critics have not embraced this one to the same degree that they embraced the first one. The first one has 64% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, but this one has 43. Mm. And the critics are all saying much the same thing that myself and Falula said after watching it. Um, it's slightly overstuffed. It's got a lot of characters, not just the ones from the uh, movie a couple of years ago, but it introduces, like, you see Patton Oswalt is brought in as a character who gets a couple of key scenes. You see the various people added to the mix and for me, it felt like too many people, like they were really trying to put everybody and everything into it, trying to bring a lot of comedians. Very chaotic. Was very it? chaotic. And story kind of was put on the back burner a little bit. Um, some of the characters from the first movie that they brought back, I kind of thought they didn't serve the story this time around. Mm. Now, but is no, it not a passing of the baton? I don't know. I don't there know is an that. element of that to some degree because you get to see Bill Murray and that crew more in this one but it's it's not that it's by the time you get to the climax and no spoilers here but by the time you get to the climax there's a large group of people standing around I mean there's a large I mean it's not just the old crew and the new crew but again they bring in like a lot of new characters that are you know they're just in for this story yeah. uh, there's a guy brought into it and he's sort of got a, a sort of like a, I don't want to say too much but he's got a sort of a superpower that kind of plays into things and I kind of wondered Gosh, do we need? Do we need? Well, you're that? a bit of an outlier because you referenced the uh, the score from critics, but the audience seemed to love mm. it. Fanula, eighty four percent of people, and yes. a lot of people would have seen this over Easter. It it it, uh, it chimed with them. I know it's a strange one because I, I agree with Michael. I really loved the first one, and I did enjoy this. Yeah. It's not that you wouldn't enjoy it, but if you're kind of taking a critical eye to it, it's like that. It's like the story kind of lost a bit purely because there was so many people in it they you know like as he said by the end of the thing when they were you know as in all of these things there's the, the big kind of fight scene or the final battle and in the final battle uh i i don't know how all they fit in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the thank, in the thank god the widescreen you know how the firehouse was always very narrow yeah <laughs> Five of them standing around in a circle. There was a lot of them. Like it was, there yeah, was, and yeah. None of the performances were bad. It's not that you'd say, "Oh, that was a terrible performance." But like Pat Oswalt's in it, yep. and he put a very quirky person in it. Um, uh, I can't think of the Kunal Nun Nun Nunjiani is yeah. yeah from the Eternals again. A great performer. I mean, a yeah, really great performer. Very good performances but, in it, but just. But do we need that character in this film? Is my feeling like mm. it's another I think, character. I think the problem was with it is because there were so many people in it, you didn't know enough about them, so you didn't really care about them. Mm. You know, I think in these things, you need it needs that little bit of heart. Is it a franchise really that needs one. just to be let go at this stage? Do you think? Oh, you know? I would say there's life in it. I would say if they if they learn their lessons for the next movie and return to a smaller. But no, I mean the, that one from a couple of years ago was great. For right. Okay. Was great fun. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's a new younger cast, and I would love to see them 
get a, you know, I'd love to see those kids kind of grow up and, and you know, you like, yeah, I'd like to see another couple of movies. All right, it's okay. Fina, Fina? Fina? I know, sorry, now, I think Michael was, and I were talking when we left the cinema and we were saying, maybe it's the middle of a trilogy. Mm. You know, yes. They may be signed up for three. And sometimes when it's a trilogy, they're, they throw a lot of stuff at it, you know, the way just to establish who they're keeping and who they're not keeping. And then you'll know in the next one exactly who, you know, mm. survives and goes Well, with all that considered, Fanula, what are you giving it out of 10? Well, I'm apparently going to go and see it again over the weekend with my niece, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a decent size. I enjoyed it. I love the Ghostbusters. I probably would have given it about a seven, seven and a half. Oh, okay. Kind of and what enjoyable. would... It It had a few jumps. It had all that kind of elements in it. But in terms of the threats uh, and, and fear, would you age it? What would you uh, say it's suitable for? Oh well, I mean, it's it, it. It. I had been thinking previously that I would bring six or seven year olds with me, which I, you might do to other things, but you wouldn't bring them to this. It does have that kind of twelve, little bit of maybe ten, twelve. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. it is twelves, and I would say, yeah, you'd want to be about ten, twelve. You right. know, you'd want to be at least that kind of. And it depends on the ch- kid as well. Mike, Michael, yeah, no, uh, what would you give it out of ten? I give the one from a couple of years ago a solid eight because right. it was great fun, but I'd bring this one down to a six because it was okay. Yeah. But I wouldn't be as enthusiastic if they had been flipped. If I had seen this one, if this had been the first one, I would have been like, oh, that franchise yeah. is, okay. is dead. Right, but, but with the hope that the, the next one's a 10. Picks then. it back up again, okay. yeah. Brilliant stuff. We're going to give away 2,500 uh, euro after this. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Get everything you need for delicious breakfast, lunches and dinners at Dunn Stores. First, you'll save in the aisles when you fill your trolley with everyday low prices on the products you buy the most. Then you'll save again at the till with our 10 or 50 grocery vouchers. Get a trolley worth 50 euro for just 40 euro. Double savers from Dunn Stores. Always better value. Terms and conditions apply. Voucher can be used to next grocery shop of 50 euro or more. Aurora's Hobbits, Crossroads, Kelly Gordon seek employees to join their expanding crash. Both full-time and part-time roles from 15 to 40 hours per week depending on the role. Must hold a QQI level 5 or equivalent. Please apply by email to aurorashobbits at gmail.com. Gareth here from TFS and Letterkenny. We are now taking bookings for the busy spring-summer period. If you are a business or homeowner anywhere in the northwest, let us take care of your painting, power washing and landscaping. Also, facility management, cleaning and utility needs. Call us today on 917 or email accounts at tfsireland.ie. Paris Kjol Tradition to is back Saturday 6th of April Main Street Letterkenny from 11 to 5pm Enjoy the atmosphere with musicians dancers actors performers and more to take to the streets with guided historic walks and more See Coltus Letterkenny on socials Weather permitting a public interest message from Donegal County Council. The big Donegal cleanup is back for its eighth year and is shaping up to be bigger than ever. Come out and make Donegal a clean and green place to live, work and visit in 2024. To sign up for this year's big Donegal cleanup, call 07491 53900. Call to your local council office or visit donegalcoco.ie. You can also register with Antashka's National Spring Clean campaign online at nationalspringclean.org. We each have a part to play. Let's work together to keep Donegal beautiful. The Big Easter Sale is now on at Cooney's Home Interiors with 20% off all departments, excluding existing offers. That's huge discounts on all suites, tables, beds and accessories. We have many X-Display models in beds and sofas all reduced to clear. Treat yourself to a bargain at the Easter Sale in Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Sale ends Sunday the 7th of April. Right, it is that time. Uh, the lines are paused on our big €10,000 uh, home makeover in association with Foy's plus 5000 cash. But now we are going to give away uh, €2,000 in cash. We're joined in studio by uh, Katie McGee. Good morning to you, Katie. Hello, hello. It's a bit awkward, this, isn't it? Fanula's down in Galway, you and... 
I and, feel like people and, may have thought we were the same person putting on different accents <laughs> because we're just never in the same room together. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, but then Michael here, the man in the middle. I know, yeah. The yeah. Little, you just fueling the fire here. It's gonna, I can just imagine what the messages what that they're getting from Fanula later. Tonight, you Sounds to. like you guys were having great fun up there without me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will get, that's what I'll get, that's what I'll get. Um, well, well earned, well deserved as well. Okay, so what's happening right now, uh, Katie, or is it up to me to explain that? We are going to give away two and a half thousand quid. Cash. Yeah, yeah cash, okay. cash, cash. All so the way. there is a number in that uh, draw drum. Do you want to go up and give it a wiggle? I'll give it a and wiggle, then maybe surely. And then maybe turn the drum a bit. Now, the drum, <laughs> not me, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> or well, that's the joke you just yeah, made. I'm very I tried slow. To. Okay, so give the trombola a okay. quick rotation. Uh, now it's been well rotated already. Uh, people mm. will trust in that, but just to be absolutely sure, right there it is. Uh, Fanula's watching on, saying, "Don't take it off its hinges," because I love okay. that thing. Uh, right. So open the draw. Uh, the the. I'm not being instructive to Katie, by the way. It's just to explain what's happening to our listeners, just it in case creates, people think. It creates drama. exactly. Right. So Katie is looking at me, digging in deep, swirling around. And, and she's about to pull out a number, and this is worth this number two and a half thousand euro. And the number is zero one three one. The uh, winner of two and a half thousand euro, their number associated with that is zero one uh, three one. So, Caroline, did you get that? Yeah. Zero one three one. She's oh, nodded off. Would you go and give Caroline? A, would you go and give Caroline a wee nudge? Zero one three one. Okay. Uh, take a seat, Katie, because. Uh, we have to um, <coughs> right so what we can actually say now at this point is the lines now are uh, officially open so you can still get tickets if you wish uh, you would still be in a draw for 10,000 euro home makeover in association with our friends at Foy's and also a 5,000 euro cash Katie what would you do with a 10,000 euro makeover I would pretty much do much of the house Sean Quinn apparently would do one room so I don't know what he's living in but anyway <laughs> I know. Sean has uh, uh, notions of himself, we'll say. <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, God, I have so much to do to my house. I really do. I really do. I would I would put an archway between the kitchen and the sitting room. So currently there's furniture. a wall there you'd knock, you would knock through? Knock it in, make it big. So, you know, when yeah. people are up, we have plenty of room, you know, like because we always have loads of people. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you ever see on, on, on uh, in, a, in a place in the sun where they always talk about, you know, for entertaining space? Yeah. No one's going out to them. No, <laughs> no one is going out. To them. I, Everyone will talk. About, oh yeah, I can't wait. I'll come out to Spain to your vet. No, no one is. I no know. Bothered. Yeah, that's yeah. what we always. I always get that at home because I've whole big notions of doing up the spare room and having a spare room is really important and having it really nice and yes. everything. And Dermot's like, should be, we don't have anyone <laughs> staying. <laughs> Michael, what would you do? Oh, I'd probably get my my comic book room. I'd just go to town on that with shelving, shelving, shelving everywhere. And, see, I was going to say that right, but yeah. I thought you would think that I was again, sort of, you know, having to go. When, when have you ever had to go? I know. When? But, but that that's never be. happened. That's <laughs> never happened. Fanula, what would you do? I think I would change the heating. I like it. I like this idea of going ground to water. Are you on about in your house or Highland Radio? Oh, no, in my house. Highland Radio can... It's fine. <laughs> I don't pay the oil bill in Highland Radio. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, we'll, so when I have to pay for the oil myself, did you realise, oh, genie? Yeah, we'll just uh, all huddle around the storage heater, the one yeah. storage heater in the entire building. No, I'm That's all you're allowed. That's all you're allowed. <laughs> um, so, air uh, to water, underfloor heating. I wonder what underfloor heating's like. I've never actually... Okay. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm stay with us. Stay, stay, stay with us. I just want to say a quick hello uh, to Neve uh, from Letter Kenny. Hi, Neve. Are you there? It's Greg and Highland Radio. How are you keeping? Neve, are you there? Hello? Neve's gone, has she? Okay, we'll see if I can get Neve back because I just want to tell Neve a little bit of news. So, But I don't know what it might be. Wonder. I don't know how much Caroline has told her, but we'll see uh, if we can get Neve back because it's always very exciting to uh, get yes. a reaction yes, on air. Yes, of course. And yeah. uh, this is live radio, man. <laughs> uh, right, so uh, what would I do? Um, no one's asked, so it doesn't matter. Because it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, you know what? When huh? you took a breath, I was going to ask you. Wow. So, uh, Sean, Quinn's, Sean Quinn's got notions of himself. Oh, I bet. Uh, <laughs> you can't get a word in edgeways with me because I well, can't. No, well, you oh, were... little Miss Perfect, aren't we? Well, 
kind of, you know, no, no, not, not no. always, but most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Anyone else you want to slag off in the building whilst we have uh, the opportunity? No, no, have another go, at Greg. <laughs> See, do you know what? Just go, at Greg, again. She, she looked upwards. <laughs> she looked upwards with. She looked upwards with her eyes, as if Absolutely. to suggest perhaps I do have something to say. Absolutely Neve not. McDade, good morning to you. Morning. <laughs> You're very welcome on to Highland Radio. How are you keeping, Neve? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, all good. Good stuff. Any plans for the weekend? Or I suppose we're just off the back of Easter, aren't we? So it's all back to reality now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no plans this weekend. No, all good. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Did you enter the um, home makeover draw on the radio station? I wonder. I did. Yes, I vaguely remember doing that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you might vaguely remember. Sorry to interrupt <laughs> your busy day. You might vaguely remember that we're giving away two and a half thousand euro today. Do you remember that, Neve? Um, yeah, vaguely, it's all come back to me now. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's all going to flood over you now in a second. Well, your ticket number was zero one three one. Katie McGee was just in studio. She dug her hand into the trombola and pulled out. Ticket 0131, Neve McDade from Letter County. Oh, You've just wow. won two and a half thousand euro in cash. <laughs> oh, wow, that is amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, Oh, thank you so much. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a lovely way amount <laughs> of money, I'm isn't it? I'm actually in work here. I hear all the, all the girls screaming. Oh, wow, <laughs> they all, brilliant. They all put me on, put on Highland Radio and, and work. Oh, fantastic. Well done, Neve. Do you want to say hello to them? Where are you working? If you don't if you don't have yeah. to divulge, that, uh, yeah, it's up to I'm you. Yeah, I'm actually... Um, Oh, absolutely. No, no, I'm up in health promotion here up in St Connells. Work for the HSE. So, yeah, hi to all well the girls done. in the office. OK, hello, girls <laughs> and boys. Uh, all right, Neve. so you've just won, you've just won two and a half thousand euro. We'll get that to you. And uh, I suppose the obvious question is, uh, what what might you spend it on? I don't know if you're planning on going away this year, I'm up, up to, getting a new car. I don't know. It's up to you. What are you going to do? Well, that's it. Well, I'm actually we're due a baby now in July, so that could oh, definitely no. go towards that. Absolutely. Oh, so. Wow. You, uh, yeah, so all I, good I news, would, and we're doing would, some home go, renovations too. I'll go through that, Neve, and I'll, after you've gone through that, I'd spend the two and a half grand on yourself. If I was you. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That's also a good plan, yeah, absolutely. Oh, listen, that's so uplifting. What a lovely thing. Uh, best wishes with everything and, and, and with the new arrival. And I'm so delighted, especially with the work that you do in everything, Neve, that you are the winner today of €2,500 in oh, cash. so much. And your ticket 0131 is going back into the draw drum and it has as much chance as any to be uh, pulled out again next Friday. Who's to say? Very unlikely, oh, wow. but it's Brilliant. in there. It's in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. OK, 2500 oh, Well done, so Neve. Hi to everyone. Uh, uh, all of your yes, work colleagues. <laughs> Congratulations. It couldn't happen to have gone to a nicer person. Well done, Neve. <laughs> bye now. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And Neve being a good sport too and taking the call, which is lovely. All right. Uh, brilliant. That's a joy, isn't it? I love yes. hearing about. Uh, uh, you know, the all excitement leading up to July. And they say the baby babies bring their own money. So there you go now. That's proof. There you go. That's well, absolute yeah, right. scientific proof. Is. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I, I, okay. I, I, I sure. could produce more if yeah. that's true. Yeah. I don't think it's true. Yeah. I think they're a bit of a drain on resources. Interesting use of the word scientific, but okay. <laughs> that's that's okay. good to know. Yeah. Yeah, Katie, listen, know. thanks so much, dearest. No problem. And uh, it's lovely. Nice to be a part of that, right? Yeah, okay, absolutely. that's Katie McGee, who is um, going away now. <laughs> how, do wrap, how do you wrap up that conversation? Right, back with more from Michael and Fnula after these. Not sure where to start with your smart meter? Sign up to a Home Electric Plus smart meter price plan from Electric Ireland to see how much energy your appliances are actually using. Track your usage monthly, daily or even hourly and get tips and advice on how to use less. It's a smart start to controlling your energy usage. To sign up, search Electric Ireland Home Electric Plus. Smart meter and online account required. Features available after four months. T's and C's apply. See electricireland.ie. Celebrate exceptional businesses in Donegal. Nominate your favourite for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with McElhenney's Department Store. Our Customer Service Awards celebrate the businesses that go above and beyond to provide excellent customer service. To nominate your favourite business, simply visit highlandradio.com, fill out the nomination form and tell us why you love this business. The winners will receive recognition at our special award ceremony on June the 9th. Plus, they'll have the satisfaction of knowing that they made a positive impact on their customers. Nominate now. Nominations close 23rd of April. 
Skoda cars are made for exploring Ireland. But let's add more style, more sexiness, more French. Skoda Fabia, Scala and Kamek models are available in the Monte Carlo range. Black exterior details, excusez-moi, sports seats and bumpers, enchanté, and carbon decor. So chic. Order your new 2024 Skoda with more je ne sais quoi at skoda.ie. Skoda, let's explore. Your local Skoda dealer is DMG Motors, Clare Road, Donegal Town. Telephone 074 97 2139 or visit dmgmotors.ie Waterworld Bundoran is back for the 2024 season and is open every day over the Easter holidays until April 7th. Experience the three-lane multi-slide, the Wizard, the Wave Pool and Rapids, the Twister Tornado and Gravity Speed Slides, the Pirates Galleon Ship and more. Booking essential. Get your tickets now at waterworldbundoran.com slash booking and find us on Facebook. Go full Lidl with exclusive Lidl Plus Super Savers. Board B approved diced Irish chicken fillets were 5 49 now 4 39 Tossing some cherry vine tomatoes, now 51% off at 1 39 And wine of the week, Portuguese Albarino, was 9 99 now 7 69 Scan the Lidl Plus app and go full Lidl today. Get the facts for drinkaware, visit drinkaware.e. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by Michael Hennies. Support a local Donegal business with Michael Hennies. From fashion to home essentials, find everything you need for any occasion. Shop Michael Honey's Bally Buffet for quality you can trust. OK, you're very welcome back uh, to the Nine Till Noon show. We heard uh, quite a lot about the weather and what to expect over uh, the next couple of days, but I'll just give you what's coming up for the afternoon. A cloudy and rather blustery day with scattered showers and fresh to strong southerly winds. Some dry and perhaps isolated sunny spells will develop this afternoon as the showers die out. Uh, highs of 11 to 14 degrees. We have the wonderful company of Fanula Rabbit and Michael Leddy uh, with us. Uh, Fanula, um, quite a lot here uh, to discuss. Yeah. I don't know which one you, <laughs> I don't know which one you want to go to next because we probably have time for one more. So I want you to pick one that you're passionate well, then about. Well, I'll just mention the next one on this because some of them are old that I've had them on for a while. Yeah. I, and and I was, just in case anybody's watching, I, I did try and watch the, um, oh, it's completely gone out of my head, um, the, the new Andrew Scott thing on Netflix. Did you see that? What's that, Andrew Scott? Is it a show or film? Yeah, it's a new show that's on Netflix. It is bit Ripley. You know, it's oh, based yes. on a movie. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, Andrew Scott plays Ripley in it, but I, I barely got through the first episode, so I wasn't ready to be able to chat about it yet. I'll have to go back to him. I love Andrew Scott, and, you know, he was nominated for a lot of awards there for that movie that he did recently. But uh, this is, the, they've shot it in black and white, and I feel like they may have gotten a little bit excited about themselves. No, <laughs> no. It is getting a lot of play, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. If the listeners have watched it, let me know. Should I bother, or will yeah. I just leave it? I stuck with the Derry Girls team, and I went with Renegade Nell, which is on Disney. Oh, okay. And in Renegade Nell, it is this, the... Um, it, it's new to Disney last week. It's great, uh, and I really enjoyed it. It's got Louisa Harlan. Sorry, I was just looking down to get her name. And there's a couple of shows on Disney that I'm watching, actually, that I'm really enjoying. But the Renegade Nell is Louisa Harlan. Um, she kind of played the cousin on um, on Derry Girls. And in it, anybody who has seen it will know she was daft. Um, she was all coming up with crazy theories. But the um, in this, she plays a a young girl who is after coming back from kind of following the drum, as they used to say back Mm. in the 1700s, she comes back from war to home. And what uh, we're not really sure what's happened to her, but she has been um, visited by a a, a spirit, which is played by Nick Mohammed from um, Ted Lasso. And this gives her nearly supernatural powers. And um, she gets a, accused of a crime and then it's all about her revolving and evolving around the way there's some fantastic actors in it i'm really enjoying it i sat down to kind of watch one or two for this just so that i'd have a flavor of it and i'm now six out of the eight Ooh. in so my uh my going to bed early got completely destroyed by it but it's really enjoyable it's like um each one is about uh, between 45 and 50 minutes you know disney have a tendency 
to never have every episode for the same amount, for the same length of time. It's a weird concept that they have, but I don't know. It's in lots of the shows that they do. But um, yeah, very enjoyable. I really, uh, I, I'm really enjoying it and I definitely recommend it to people. And it does, I mean, it has a little bad language, but it, you know, and there is obviously a little bit of fighting in it, but there's no kind of blood or gore. Mm. Or fight. So you could sit down with kind of, again, like we're saying, Ghostbuster age, kind of like 10, 12, as long as you don't mind them hearing, you know, a few bad words. You could definitely sit down and, um, you know, so far to date anyways. It's kind of interesting uh, uh, you. that you added to the review in that I, I've known Disney is spending an awful lot of money at the moment, uh, seemingly, and they've changed their, their design a little bit to uh, make the argument that it's not just kids telling, mm. uh, that there's adult stuff there, there's blood and bad language and a bit of hanky-panky, if you know what I mean. So they're obviously trying to not rebrand themselves, but to broaden their, broaden their horizon that mm. people don't just think. Oh, it's yeah, a, I mean, this is a great show but also a great show i was watching on is death and other things mandy patenkin is in mm. it and uh, michael probably knows violet bean she was in one of the uh, marvel uh, concepts back in the day but it's uh, it's very dark it's very you know it's kind of like a murder mystery type of a thing and um, all about you know mandy patenkin plays supposedly the greatest detective in the world kind of an idea and it's very sort of back and forth but they're doing lots of older stuff you know along with um murders in the buildings different things like mm. that you know so they are trying to cover did that mandy patenkin thing it. did you finish it did you wrap up the season or did you i did yeah and does, does i wasn't sure about it in the beginning but actually by the time i got to the end of it i really enjoyed it because it's making not a second series of it. it's not getting it yeah they pulled the plane on it so it was counting this week but I was it's interesting no so it's, way yeah oh I actually enjoyed it by the yeah. end the first one or two was a bit was I wasn't sure about it but by the time I actually watched it to the mm. end I really enjoyed it um, Halo on Paramount, uh, Michael. Yes, Halo on Paramount. Um, I've been looking for a good action show for yeah. a while. I was drawn to this because of some of the people involved in it. Um, Kyle Killen <coughs> is a guy, a producer and writer who did a great show years ago called Awake with Jason Isaacs. I loved it. It was about a cop who was kind of trapped between mm. two realities. And Stephen Kane was the guy behind one of my favourite action shows of the last 10, 15 years, a show called The Last Ship which was about a post-apocalyptic world and there was a naval ship that was sailing the seas, basically trying to save the world. And it had brilliant, brilliant action sequences. I thought it was a fantastic show. So uh, I thought, right, Halo, I know it's a game. I don't play the game. I'm not a gamer. But I thought if Kyle Killen and Stephen Kane are behind this show, it's got to be a good action show. So I dived into season one there back in the spring, uh, back in February, and thoroughly enjoyed it. It delivered the action that I was looking for, but not in uh, every episode. There was episodes that were very story-driven and had no action. So basically, the story is we're a uh, far distant future. We've got a, a, a situation where there's like a federation that rules the, the galaxy, but they rule kind of with a, an iron fist, an iron thumb. And uh, they have these super soldiers that kind of um, are sort of their enforcers. And they're not very well liked in some of the outlying planets. Into this situation comes mysterious, powerful aliens who uh, start raining death and destruction down on people. So now the uh, population find that they're kind of caught between two evils, but they're kind of going to support, uh, I suppose, the, the, the soldiers that they've previously been rebelling against. And the focus of the series is one in particular. Mm -hmm. Pablo Marcus is the name of the guy. He plays Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 and he's our protagonist he's our hero and he finds himself over the course of the first season linked to a mysterious object which may uh, reveal things about his own past and may give him uh, powers beyond the scope of any normal human being so it delivers the action it delivers uh, an epic size science fiction storyline involving the threat to the entire galaxy I got him I wanted to watch it because I wanted a good action show and I like good sci-fi action shows and there's nothing else that I have that fits that bill All also, <clears throat> Natasha McElone is in this, and I'm a big fan of her. She's a big, huge Donegal connection. I haven't spent many years here. I think okay. her family still is a home here. I like that. Yeah, she's... Um, now, I first saw her in Revelations with Bill Pullman back in the early noughties, and then she was on Californication as David Duchovny's ex-wife. Fantastic actress. There's a case to be made for saying she's the best thing about this show. She really gives a great performance as a morally ambiguous or morally challenged scientist. She's the one responsible for making John 117 who he is. 
Uh, but her, without saying too much, her motivations are not as pure as they might seem. She seems quite manipulative. It delivers the action. It delivers on story. Uh, it's got a, um, a Bokeem Woodbine is in this, one of the coolest guys on the planet. He's, mm. he's, I love that guy. He was on Fargo, where I first seen him, and he gets an excellent part in this as an ex one of the, you know one of John's soldiers. He was a guy who who escaped from the boot camp years ago. Uh, I'm loving this show, and I've given it a good solid eight, maybe nine, nine out of ten. I like the mm. action, and I'm all set to watch season two. And this I one never is had on an Xbox, so I, don't, I never really played Halo. It's very yeah, Xbox oriented game. I'm but a you don't. Person. Like, I know that. Yeah, I'm just, te- yeah, I'm just yeah. a bit of idle Ch- information. Just <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I'm content. the same as you. I'm not a gamer. No interest. Oh, but, I am a gamer. I just don't have an Xbox. Yeah. I have a PlayStation. I've does that make you one of the cool gamers or one of the? For me, it does. It's like Apple versus Android, yeah. Xbox versus PlayStation. Do you know that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, I try and convert people as I as I go through life. How is that going for you? Uh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Rightio, listen, that's great stuff. Um, and uh, I'm just watching Queen of the South. I started again. It's like I never watched it. Oh, you it. watched it before. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, watched three or four episodes of the series, but I, it's it's like watching it again. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, you know, do you get that, Fanula? Or, or what's your memory like for stuff? Like I'm watching it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. you're, ask, you're asking Fanula? <laughs> Hold on a second here. Sorry. Who are you and that, where is that, the real Greg Hughes? That was a rhetorical question. No, yeah. but, you know, like, it's it's good. Like, I'm enjoying it because it's, it's it's also, it, it is, you, you know, it's there's stuff in it for people that like all different stuff. So it's an action-y like, thing, though, isn't it? I mean, there's action, no? It's more, yeah, it's a gritty drama it is, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah gritty she's drama. A, she's a, she's a, a crime boss, isn't she? No, oh. not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I presume that's well, where she's going to elevate it. I thought to. you said she just finds oh. herself caught up in the okay. in the cartels, and you can see. <laughs> I her, hate when that oh happens. No. Oh my and god! Can, it's on Netflix. It's actually a really good show for you someone just, who's looking for something long. You just want to go and get some milk and bread and cheese, and I, then I, you're I, caught up in the cartels. That's your old Friday gone. I tried to sort of watch Doom, the first Doom, Dune. Sorry, because the Dune two's mm-hmm. in the cinema, and it was like when you were explaining Halo about different worlds and planets and species and names. And I, I watched five minutes back. Out, wow. uh, I just couldn't face it. Fanula, listen, great to see you. Um, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Not at all. Thank and you. Best very wishes much. to everyone down there. Say hi to Jerry and the crew. All right, thanks very much indeed. Of course. That is uh, Fanula Rabbit joining us remotely, mm-hmm. and also we have uh, in studio with us uh, Michael Eddy, and we're going to say goodbye to him. Bye, Michael. Bye. Thanks very much. See you next Friday. See you next week. All right, okay, sorry, I'm have a few technical things to do whilst we're talking all right and that is it for the nine till noon show for this week stay tuned michaela clark's coming up around the northwest after the news at uh, 12 with the usual mix of music uh newsy bits and uh, conversation we're back with you all being well monday morning from nine but for me greg hughes caroline or who researched and produced and shannon wilkin as well working on the show have a wonderful weekend everybody virgin media